Mark my fucking words. I'm coming for you. I'm gonna find out who the fuck you are. You motherfucker. Talking all that bullshit. Let this Clip this up. one, bitches. Mark my fucking words. I'm coming for you. You are fucked. And you are done. I'm looking 30, 40, 50, sissified boys from the bottom. 30, 40, 50, ass busters. The chap ain't no clapback video. Why? What is it that serious? But I need boys. Please, the creator. Please. Bless me, but I need boys. Please, Please allow my boy sperms to go fast and shoot fast enough. Go fast enough. Please. Please, the creator, please bless me. Mark my fucking words. I'm coming for you. Bloodshed and bullets. You are fucked. And you are dumb. I'm coming for you. They all so dumb. 30, 40, 50 punk ass bitches. I'm the one that chaffered. Because this is usual here on DSP Gaming. We play games, we have fun. If you guys like it, you support it. The week is going slow. Tough through it. So how are you doing? This is how I'm doing. Tips very low now. But I've noticed tips very low right now. The week is going slow. It gets to me. Please. My life is ruined. This is how I'm doing. The losers out there who thinks that they know shit. Kiss my fucking ass and eat my shit. Right now. A full podcast book. Full gameplay streams book. Everything's book. Ladies and gentlemen. Hey. 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 Back on. Are we? Welcome everybody, welcome, welcome, what's going on, what's going on gangsters, what's going on, last night was a cool show, it actually kind of sucked, uh, but today we, we're here to see the opinion of a real gamer, Mr. DSP Space Gaming, 15 years in the biz, he's got all the takes, he's got all the right opinions, he is right now in his own chat coping that he wasn't wrong about um, about Baldur's Gate, and, and he posted a hot tweet, uh, that actually has the replies unlocked, surprisingly, uh, first of all, thank you, Sigmoid, for the super chat, dude, big ups, I think there was, like, a burger sticker or something, thanks for the burger, uh, so here's the tweet, we watched the entire Game Awards tonight, so on tomorrow's podcast, I will hold a segment where you can ask me questions directly about my thoughts on it. Plus, I'll have a major announcement to make regarding the streams. So see you then. Um, as you can see, comments are unlocked, which means that there's going to be a lot of them and they're going to be very fun to read. So let's get right into that. First guy says, major announcement. Going to be some low effort nonsense, like a new overlay or something completely useless. LMAO. <laughs> what, a story, what I'm Mark. thinking too. Um, then we got Innocent Orphan, who says, As a member of the PC Master Race, I'll be waiting to hear an apology about all the nonsense you spewed regarding Baldur's Gate 3. Know your place, console peasant. There you go, Mr. Master Race. 
Master Race, by the way, not even getting GTA 6 on time. They're going to get it later because they're so good. Haha, <laughs> take that, Master Race. Uh, then we got Soul King Grieveston, who says, Major announcement, going to be how you're playing Baldur's Gate 3, isn't it? I think so. Uh, what was the game that people were going to forget when Starfield came out? Bleh. So it's basically people trying to uh, ratio him. Some of them successful, by the way, because this his original tweet got only like 27 likes. So as you can imagine, the replies gonna be clapping his ass. But get ready uh, for him to tell you that he was actually right about Baldur's Gate and um, something, 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 something. So yeah. Uh, what what was the uh, yeah? I read this already. Uh, Phil proven wrong again, lol. Must be the fact that you're on level 1 and diss the game that rose above the pathetic mess of your takes. Wow, people fucking going in, going all in. That's a Brexit tackle if I've ever seen one. Uh, oh well, don't forget to tip him though, he really needs the money. What are the replies to this one? Yeah, nothing, nothing important. What do we got here? Nothing interesting. He won't do that, he will correct himself. He won't ever admit he was wrong. That's why he will get divorced soon. Wow, that's... <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's an S tier um, DSP comment reply. Is he back? He's not back. He's not here yet. Uh, he had scheduled his stream, by the way, for basically 10 minutes from now. So is, does that mean that this is the official start time of the stream? Which would be 9.15 my time. Because it usually starts like 8.45, and then you got like 20 minutes of music. So he actually is on stream around 9.10, 9.15. Uh, but I guess this is going to be the new, the, the new gimmick, unless it's just him fucking it up. What happened the last time he streamed? Let's see a, a daily wrap. DSP Gaming. I don't know why I forgot what his channel was called. Let's go on videos. Uh, Robocop. How did his part one of Robocop do? Um, very good for his standards. And then it, it collapsed hugely. Hugely collapsed. He lost like 1,100 views from episode one to episode two. God damn it. Uh, that's, that's bad. But yeah, what, what is my call on the huge announcement? It's probably him playing Baldur's Gate almost immediately. Probably like tomorrow or something as a surprise. Or something like that. Uh, you know, it's going to be something super, super low effort. So don't get any kind of hopes or expectations for it. It's going to be trash. Uh, so what do we got on the Daily Wrap? Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Wrap for what was... Good evening, Grandpa. ...of December 2023. My final consecutive streaming day of this first week of December, the first holiday week of the year. And uh, man, it was a good one. A good streaming day overall. Let's talk a little bit about Oh, that. I was also thinking about the possibility of DSP having an interview with Super Blind Man. Because, you know, now he's award-winning Super Blind Man. And he's an industry insider. He's a guy that works in the industry. And DSP thinks that he's a professional guy. So if I was, if I was him, I would want to have an interview with that guy. You know? A paragon of accessibility. Very hype guy at the moment. But, of course, probably not going to happen. Come on. But I would really love to see DSP interview somebody because it's just fascinating to me how he's going to have a conversation that is based around the other person because that's what interviewing somebody kind of is. I, I don't want DSP to inter interview somebody and then it ended up being all about what happened to Phil and Phil's experiences with stuff. First of all, reminder he actually wants his takes to be taken seriously. Absolute clown face. Yeah. Clown face pick clown face pick clown face. He was, um, a couple of months ago, he was asking people to clip some of his takes and upload them on YouTube, like people do to, you know, bigger streamers and bigger people than him, or and comedians and stuff. He wants other people to be, to be basically running positive clips channels with his takes, so they can attract more people to his stream. It's an ingenious tactic. I don't, I don't know why it didn't work out, probably because it's really stupid. On today's Level 1 podcast, we had a very important question to tackle. Should I play Avatar Frontiers of Pandora starting on Friday when I come back from my break? 
Uh, up until today, there was absolutely no information that was concrete about this game on the internet. Oh, I don't think he's playing the game, by the way. I don't, I don't think he's playing the Avatar game. Because uh, I saw a bunch of reviews of it. Everything saying that it's super generic. DSP is already, like, the most generic Let's Player. If he plays this, it's going to be the most slop-filled playthrough you've ever seen. Legitimately. It's, like, potentially one of the worst he's ever done. I'm not joking. That game looks so flat. Eh. Finally, this morning, these reviews were released, uh, and game previews, you know, these these blowouts about how it's how the game Blowouts. is. Blowouts. And it basically seemed like everyone <clears throat> had a very big mixed opinion. Some reviews were way up here. Some reviews were way down here. Um, I had an in-depth conversation with the live audience about this this morning, talking about, you know, what what will I be playing? You know, right now I'm playing RoboCop, Rogue you City, which is You aren't seeing what really I'm seeing. Fill to SBM. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that one. You see, Super Blind Man, you're not seeing what I'm seeing. That's on the level of when, when he asked Jade if Jade's going to take a walk when he went to, like, Disneyland or something. That's that level of, a, of, of expression. Good. I'm going to continue with that playthrough. Uh, you know, trying out Warzone 3.0 and seeing how that pans out. Um, keeping up with Street Fighter Six, keeping up with, like, a Dragon Gaiden, and all that stuff considered... You know, do we want to? Oh, start he's this about game to start Friday soon. Not kind of a big. I wonder if he's gonna have a cold open. Let's let's actually see and enjoy a great whatever the fuck this music is. If uh, if his take on Baldur's Gate three pisses me off too much, I'm gonna go watch the clip of him saying that it's not gonna win Game of the Year, and then we're gonna cross reference what he says in that clip to what he says in this podcast. I already have that Hello, prepared in mind everyone. to do. Welcome to a new week of streams. Welcome back to the show. Wow, he's this so jolly. This is the post Game Awards podcast, and we have a lot to talk about. I'm sure there's some open discussion that will be had. What the fuck is an open discussion? Share all that you deciding all what people Plus, talk about? Direct result: There will be major schedule changes. There you go. In your future. That's it. All this and more discussed on today's episode the level one podcast happy holidays shut the fuck up um yeah so it is um it it is basically him playing some game that's his big announcement schedule changes i'm so excited i am filled with the jolly festive spirit of excitement and jolliness uh he's gonna do a bunch of mental gymnastics and uh and make it look like he was right about everything Alrighty, so today is Friday, the 8th of December, 2023. I'm Darkside Phil. I welcome you here. I'm also Darkside Phil. The podcast. And today, of course, welcome to the podcast. will be a hefty show. Because today is the Game Awards Decompression Show. The now, Decompression you know, Show. I told you guys this Look at this clown-ass gimmick. The Game Awards are not official. He's going to pretend he didn't say BG3 would end even. Yeah, he's gonna... There's gonna be a lot of coping and mental gymnastics, dude. Win at the Game Awards. I almost can't wait. Is good or bad. They have absolutely I can no wait. On anything. In fact, the Game Awards are actually voted on majority, majority by journalists. And we all know that games journalists are actually not in line with what most gamers want. Therefore, we actually have absolutely nothing to talk about today. So that is it for the podcast. And okay. I'll see you all tomorrow. That's what he would do if he had actual integrity, because he's been shitting on the Game Awards since they exist, and but now he's doing a podcast capitalizing on the Game Awards. You see, we're getting content out of something that he objectively hates. No one listens to me. A hefty show. Cat is coming on for the first time in years, I guess. Hopefully, yeah. That's the huge reveal. So I end up having to talk about it every year regardless. I really wish that people would... Oh, he has to talk about it? He doesn't really have to talk about it. I feel like a lot of great games get overlooked and a lot of bad games get overhyped because the Game Awards are focused mostly on games journalism, which I completely disagree with. We've all been talking about how in the last five plus years there's been a big divide between common opinion of video games and what games journalists are saying about them. I mean, let's be honest, most average gamers probably play more games than game journalists these days. So how could they have a valid opinion no, that's more not qualified true. than ours, right? Anyway, we're not here to discuss that. We're here to discuss the elephant in the room. Because ladies and gentlemen, if you can believe it, 
the biggest surprise shocker ever just happened at the Game Awards 2023. Are you ready for this? This is what everyone wants me to talk about. This is the burning topic that must be addressed right he's now. He's going to make a joke about it's celebrities. Else. This is what he's going to do. He's going to say, yes, um, Anthony Mackie was at the Game Awards. That's what he's going to say. Game I'm calling it. Year was not given to Starfield. And that oh, no, it's an even worse, atrocity. dude. We all know it's even that a worse Starfield joke. was definitively, without a doubt, without any kind of criticism or commentary possible, it was the indisputable best game of 2023, hands down. How could anyone possibly say something differently? And the fact that it didn't win Game of the Year just proves that it was complete sham. This is just a bunch of people who are trying to push agendas. It's absolutely ridiculous, right? We all know there's an Xbox tax oh, out there. Oh. He's starting a chatterbait Gunzi Defal. Yeah, he's gonna be gooning. Oh hell no yeah! What, if a game that, exclusive to Xbox and we love that. DSP jerks it. Um, but dude, I hate this fucking satire like a parody sketch show segment because he's just bad at it and the moment he he starts setting up for the joke you already know what it's going to be and you just wait for him to finish never win at the game awards okay are you done grandpa bunch of baloney are you done can we actually actually for real talk of course i'm being completely facetious with that prediction big snorts beggars he got what's funny dude. to me uh, I, it did. Is that, and I said this earlier. Didn't today, win anything. And I'll reiterate, and I will. I'm basically going to. I don't even know if it got nominated for something. Want me to address, but it's not intelligent people who want me to address this. Sadly. Oh my um, god. Basically, this year was a year when there were so many games that when they came out, everyone was just so sure that they were going to be game of the year this year. Are you ready to go through the list? of games you know first we started off with resident evil 4 remake oh my god this game is so good i can't believe that this game would not be game of the year and then it was zelda tears of the kingdom wow it blows away breath of the wild it's so many innovations and so many new things i can't believe this game wouldn't be game of the year and then it was final fantasy 16 oh my god it's the best final fantasy ever amazing music great visuals it's a great story. I can't believe it. The best game of the year. And then Baldur's Gate 3 came out. Oh my god. It's the best RPG ever made. Fan service out the wazoo. They really put attention to detail. There's no way it can't be game of the year. And it, it He is so fucking obnoxious year, right now. Right? The thing is that I can agree with the grander point that he's making. But he's being so fucking hateable in the way that he makes the point. It makes me want to disagree with him. And the funny part was, every time that this happened, I called it out. And I was like... Oh, he called it out. You see, this is one of those yeah, segments. Me saying, you guys realize not every major RPG and or release this year can be Game of the Year. They can be nominated for it, though. Like, many of the games he just mentioned were nominated in several categories. But that's how everyone is acting. There's all these different... Where's everyone? Fans People on Twitter? We're all acting like no matter what their game is going to get game of the year. And at that point when all this was happening, because I specifically remember there was a particular podcast where I addressed it, I said, you have to understand something. There's absolutely no way all these games can win game of the year. In fact, I would bet a lot of these wouldn't even get nominated. Now in that regard, I guess I was wrong because if you actually look... Hey, he actually admits he was wrong about something. Pretty much every game that had a major fan base except for a couple, which we'll talk about in a second. Okay? So... Um, when we got to that point, I basically made a statement and I was like, listen, you guys got to understand something. At that point, Baldur's Gate 3 was only on PC. There actually hadn't even been an announcement of when it was coming to console yet. And everyone on PC loved it. But I said, you got to understand something. There's a couple factors here. Number one, if it's only a PC game, that's an isolated audience. If it's not mainstream available, there's going to be people who are not going to be able to play the game. That's going to be a hard sell for game of the year. You know, take a look at previous years, a game like Divinity 2, right? Which everyone absolutely praised and loved. But a lot of people never even talked about because it was PC only for the longest time until it finally got console ports. Right? I mean, that's Oh, and he does, the, that. he does the fucking smug shrug, dude. Whenever he does it, it just makes me want to commit crimes against him. Like, actually. From the past. Now, in addition to that, at that time, 
Because we're because this is this basically a lecture right now, and he's wrong about half the shit he said, but it doesn't matter because there's nobody to correct him. There's nobody to tell him, "Hey, Phil, by the way, like what what you just said was wrong. Let's talk about it." Around the summertime, there were still big releases on the horizon, like uh, Starfield and Spider-Man Two, and a few others that people were eyeballing, and particularly, it was actually Starfield that we were eyeballing at that time. And we were like, well, if this game absolutely lives up to all of the promises that are made about this game, okay? Um, absolutely, this game could be Game of the Year shoo-in, right? It's a make-or-break game for Bethesda. They've had a bunch of bad, disappointing outings right before this, correct? I mean... Take a look at they had the uh, Redfall, which was absolutely terrible. Red, they didn't develop Redfall. It was developed by Arcane Austin. Arcane Studios. They had Fallout seventy six, which was an atrocity at launch, and to this day, sure. an online player base, but nowhere near what they were originally wanting for the game because it flopped at launch. Fallout four had a bunch of major criticisms. Who had major criticism? This motherfucker gave it like a nine point seventy five out of ten. This motherfucker, right when it came out, because he wanted the views. And now it's like, well, that's it actually, actually disappointing. It's how definitely it won. It didn't just win. Goth, it won absolutely. And Starfield got yep. humiliated. In uh, Starfield and Spider-Man, man, they, they didn't win anything. And the fact they just keep really re-releasing Skyrim. They got clapped. And not putting out anything new. This was the big one that they were hinging everything on. And everyone was kind of, you know, once we saw that presentation, do you remember? Was it around Summer Games Fest, I want to say? They showed yes. some people were like, all right, we're starting to feel more positive about this game, right? And basically, again, it was uncertain. But here's the thing. Starfield was going to be PC and Xbox, right, at launch. And with that media hype behind it and everything, you're like, wow. It I, I, the, the common feeling was that it was kind of a wait and see. At that point, I told you, I thought, I thought for me all year, I was thinking Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate 3, or Starfield. Oh, I so he was actually that, right, you guys, because he was thinking about it. Three that'll likely be contention for Game of the Year. But knowing how journalists lean towards Nintendo, because I never thought that Breath of the Wild would have won, and it did, okay? And knowing how journalists go with height, and if Starfield was good, then he probably would have leaned right towards that. You know what I'm saying? I don't even um, know what he's coping with right now. I thought because like his whole gimmick was that he said that Baldur's Gate 3 is not going to win game of the year because it was on PC and now it's just like we're building a whole different universe of context around that one statement and it would have been much easier to just say I was wrong I didn't predict this right there you go for sure those would have gotten favor because now, like, he's building this entire new narrative, this whole story. He's writing a whole history leading up to the event, so just so he can be not guilty about something that is absolutely insignificant. This reminds me of when, uh, when he got the mini PC and Lavinia corrected him about the, the uh, cooling solution, and he went on a massive fucking rant. Let's be honest. Starfield's not very good. It's right? not. Starfield is a huge disappointment. I mean, I talked about it in the credits of the playthrough. I, I gave you my review of it. It's just incredibly underwhelming. It doesn't live up to any of the promises. Actually looks like more like a joke than anything else. Looks like Yeah, a big ups uh, Solidus Prime for the made and how 199, dude. Big ups to everybody else. Copy. Jack, like Infinite it's, Beak, it's Bikes. Big ups, you guys. Sharpness. It looks more blurry and fuzzy and shitty. And that's exactly what Starfield looks like. When you made the same game ten times, the tenth iteration isn't as good as the first three. Everyone wants to go back and play the three classics. I don't want to play the tenth clone. And that's exactly what Starfield feels like. It lost its unique identity along the way of being an awesome Bethesda RPG and just feels like, oh, paint by numbers. And that's bad. So, because of that, all right, that completely changed the landscape of what possibly would have been considered Game of the Year. Honestly, I was shocked when Alan Wake 2 got nominated for Game of the Year. Personally, I loved Alan Wake 2, and I was very happy to see it get all the recognition it did last night at the Game Awards. That was really nice to see that game that normally a game like that would have been overlooked, but it got tons of recognition. I was like, wow, I'm shocked it got as much as it did. Um, but then when it got nominated, I was like, could it possibly win? I don't think so. I didn't ever really felt like it could. Uh, Spider-Man 2, I never thought was going to win. Honestly, like that would have, I would. I'm gonna go that. watch the. I'm gonna watch the the original Baldur's Gate 3 segment during the shoutouts or schedule nonsense. 
and dislocate and jump out of my skin and land on the floor if that one because journalists just aren't about the superhero games they're just not you know um but once essentially starfield sucked and was not even nominated for game of the year yeah i think that the top two games that it was between was tears of the kingdom and baldur's gate 3 and i said as much but the funny part is people out there who are morons like to take one moment in time and act like that moment in time is eternal that nothing what? ever changes if you take my quote from many months ago that said Baldur's oh Gate 3 is not going to win Game of the Year because it's PC centric and right? right now with everything else going on. Yeah, you actually said it though. Said, Starfield is a shoe in for Game of the Year if it's as good as it, people are saying it's going to be. And what happened? Well, Baldur's Gate 3 really. So, this, what kind of a fucking take is this? Well, if this game is really good, it might win Game of the Year, you guys. Yeah, no fucking shit. For console, people have what a great take. Console, and it got more mainstream attention than it had before. Starfield came out and flopped. No one likes it. Only a very hardcore fan base of Bethesda and Xbox players are all oh. over it. No one likes it except this huge fan base of people that actually are all over it and they love it. Uh, is he fucking listening to what he's actually saying? Are any of the people in his chat actually listening? Actually listening? Paying attention to the words coming out of his mouth? I was like, wow. What We're contradicting ourselves within a single sentence. Appointment didn't even get nominated for Game of the Year. So basically exactly the qualifying situation that I considered to happen, happened. And now Baldur's Gate 3 is kind of the, sh like I said, it was either between Baldur's Gate 3 Just and Zelda. Just going to I say really if Cart ever opened up only members, Phil wouldn't need to beg every day. Um, at least for the first month, out of curiosity, that thing is going to blow up, man. I was worried. Because you gonna guys blow up. Me, I didn't love Zelda that much. I didn't. He I didn't. Zelda was a good game. Because he had to be creative to be good at the game. I disagreed with Breath of the Wild. And he's lobotomized. Years ago. And I was like, dude, if Zelda wins, this is going to be bullshit. Because there's so many better games this year better than Zelda. Thank God that didn't win. Right? But that's absolutely what I said would happen is now it would be between those two games. But no one will say that. No one will look at my my opinions from like the last couple of weeks to months and take that as fact. They just want to go back five, six months before any of this what? information was available when I made a, a prediction back then. And say that was my prediction it's wrong yes my outdated prediction before starfield came out before baldur's gate 3 hit console was wrong you're right once more data was given i changed my prediction but why don't you talk about that because you're a bunch of fucking morons and all you want to do is talk about phil was wrong phil was wrong nobody cares you're a bunch of losers onward okay so nobody cares but the very first segment of the podcast is dedicated to talking to the trolls talking he's talking to the trolls addressing the trolls and then it's like, fuck you, nobody cares. I, I think he cares more than I do. So, here's the deal. Today we're going to talk about the game. So fucking lot. butthurt right, over what this. What I'm going to do is briefly go through my And I, I love the fact that he gets butthurt over such tiny things. It is so funny. He takes the bait all the time. What we're going to do is we're going to approach this in an open format where you guys are going to be able to ask me questions. Wow. Say, hey, what do you guys Crazy want to open about? format. Ask me a question live on stream about the Game Awards and I'll answer it. What you know, ask me about a certain game or a certain announcement and I'll talk about it. But you say, well, why aren't you going to do an in depth recap? Because the Game Awards were three and a half hours long and that's too fucking long. Yeah, we that's don't want that. E3, that. I already sat any through it once. Conference ever. The Game Awards are way too drawn out <clears throat> and sadly get super boring. The last hour of the Game Awards, it's hard to stay awake. It's just not entertaining anymore. It gets really I agree. just stupid. And quite frankly, if you want my overall opinion on the Game Awards, I'll just tell you right now, they were incredibly underwhelming. There yeah. were far too few interesting announcements. There were too many indie games no one's going to fucking care about by seeing a little snippet about it at the Game Awards. And this is why he's dog shit, right? This is why he will never go mainstream. He would never be respected or taken seriously. Just by how naturally toxic his whole fucking opinion is and just the way of him expressing himself is just so fucking he toxic said pc gaming and pc exclusive are not mainstream but just steam alone has more active users than xbox playstation and nintendo combined but show pc gaming is not mainstream bro pc is super mainstream i mean come on like what the fuck it's just pc consoles it's it's the mainstream gaming he's just bullshitting on that because he never played on pc in the last like five years something Big ups, Culp side, Phil. Complete waste of everyone's time. And, and look at this. Look at this. Because I've, I've, um, today I sat through some other people watching the show, actual professionalists, uh, professionals, you know? 
um, react to the show, and they were discussing it like actual grown-ups, right? Not like kids. And this is like kids. Oh, well, this is shit nobody cares about. I don't give a fuck. And then he, he calls this shit coverage. He's like covering an event. I mean... Go fuck yourself, there dude. There were far too few interesting announcements. There were too many indie games. No one's going to... And, like, I agree with the content of what he's saying. I agree. I didn't like the event. I wasn't interested in most of the games. But there's a way more professional and, and diplomatic way of saying this. I can care about by seeing a little snippet about it at the Game Awards. It was a complete... Especially if you want to be taken seriously by anybody. Big blockbuster announcements and games winning awards and that was it and then the show would have been 90 minutes but instead it was three and a half hours two hours of which were completely oh, low the pig's ego is so fragile more. i would expect nothing less from someone who lives in a gl unicorn house nobody cares well except for me re yeah nobody cares except for the people that do but and i know i know when people say nobody cares that means i don't care but Come in, come on! It's a forty-one-year-old dude. He he should be able to express himself better than, like, like a twelve-year-old. Basically, the, now it's the Oscars, and the Oscars suck too. So why emulate a show that everyone collectively agrees is not good? I don't know what Jeff is thinking. Like the show should be much better than it is. And there were a few really awesome announcements. Like my probably the thing that resonates in my head was OD, the new game from Hideo Kojima. It looks like it's some kind of a, a hybrid horror movie game interesting something unique that stands out to me as something awesome right so if they had like five big announcements like that and then all the game awards the show would have been great but instead they have insane amounts of bloat and nonsense crammed in that makes it boring i didn't like it overall you know here we are three and a half hours at night and we're fast forwarding through shit like i don't fucking care about the next bullshit generic shooter that looks exactly the same as 17 other shooters oh look another fantasy rts fast forward it's like fuck this They're look at this shit. dude this dude fucking hates video games man this dude hates video games look at the fucking energy he got oh it's a fucking indie game well get this fucking bullshit out of my face nobody fucking cares you see half these announcements like what what does he want just like generic triple a slop i guess they're not announcements yet they all they probably all paid to what, what does he actually want which is sad because no one's gonna fucking end up getting any kind of dude legitimately run. just hates video games man and there are plenty of of the games that i didn't like and i couldn't care less about but this dude is straight up toxic about it we're gonna do let me briefly go through my schedule then i'm going to field questions about the game awards and you guys will be able to ask me directly questions about it He's um, acting like he's the president or something. Okay, and we'll see what you guys want to talk about today. Fair enough. About the game Dave definitely could relate to extreme wants. amounts of bloat as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. The show wasn't the only extremely bloated thing. Okay, so, <clears throat> first stream today, Robocop. He's looking like real continue. crunchy Great today. Game. Five hours in, I'm absolutely loving this game. I'm having no issues or problems with it at all besides the animations of the characters. The story is good. The gameplay is getting better. I'm leveling up RoboCop in like an RPG style. I like this, that the investigations and side content, is, it has little side stories that are interesting. I can't wait to jump back in. I'm very happy that you guys convinced me to play it because this was one that definitely went under my radar and a lot of people's radar because it's made by a studio not a lot of people know about. Uh, very excited for RoboCop today and uh, hope you'll join me after this podcast to continue the playthrough. Tonight, it's Friday Night Fights, Friday Night Street Fighter Six. And tonight, we're looking to rank my Dalsim up to 5-star Oh my Beyond. god. Last week, I could finally try to advance the plot a bit. So I have two private React videos to do, so I have to take the night off. Oh yeah, Sunday night is off, you guys. I'm going to take a little bit of that extra time to possibly film one to two. I can release them over the course of time. As a direct result of your request, as a direct result of the... Oh, there we go. This is the announcement. Of the He's playing Baldur's Gate 3. Spoilers. I received a donation on Monday on of the course. daytime stream starting right then at 12.45 p.m. Pacific time for the first time ever right here live on DSP Gaming because you want it for all the months that you've asked for and told me that I was wrong for skipping it. On Monday, we're starting Baldur's Gate 3. Bro. Um... If I say what I want to say, I'm going to get banned from YouTube. And let me tell you This something. is like an all-time infuriating segment. The last 20 seconds. I'm just going to be quiet and play. 
If this isn't the best RPG I've ever fucking played in my life, if it's overhyped, if it feels underwhelming, if it's a slow-paced piece of crap, I'm gonna be pretty pissed off because you guys keep telling me it's the best RPG ever and I'm so wrong for skipping it. If this game isn't great, I'm going to call you out. So you better be ready. But don't worry, I'm gonna be fair. I'm not going to unfairly judge this game. I'm not. No, I wasn't gonna call him a slur. It's not because of that. It's more of like, um... He wants innovation, but only wants to play games made by super corporations shoveling out the same CV well, there you go. after year. And, and whenever a smaller, more innovative game comes out, like Dredge, or, I don't fucking know, Dave the Diver, he doesn't give a fuck about it and says no one cares. Like, he's, he fucking, you he, he, he can. Like, what does he actually want at this point? I'm going to be calm, and I'm going to judge it for itself fairly as we play. I was, uh, I was going to make a comment about YouTube's terms of service and the policy of uh, self-harm, basically. But my That's God, what I was going to say. Ridiculously overhyped this game. And every time that I've asked the question, how is this game the best RPG? No one can answer. Well, it's got a great story. So do other RPGs. Oh, well, it's, it's good comedy. Why don't you fucking play it and find out, dumbass? Oh, the atmosphere, yeah. Oh, well, the devs listen to the fans. Other oh, devs have listened to fans. Can you definitively explain to me what exactly it is? in this game that makes it stands out. The bear sex scene. That's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. Oh my god, he hates it so- He already hates the game. He He's like, determined to hate it already. This is gonna be a legendary playthrough. Tell me the game is good because- He is gonna hate it so hard. Has a bear sex scene. What are you, five years old? He already does. So, that's what I mean, like, when everyone says it's the best, but no one can actually explain why. That makes me wonder about it. Okay, so we're gonna find out now by the way I want to remind you all of the reasons why I didn't play Baldur's Gate 3 this year You ready first of all it was PC only I don't care So I couldn't play it at launch because it was PC only well but then you're shit at your job on PlayStation I was already in the midst of other fall playthroughs that were popular and I didn't really have time to play a lengthy RPG Oh, so time. you're shit at your job also because of the way this game has been described You're shit at your job that people are telling me that it is all right, uh Basically, here's the deal, all right? I feel like it's not a game that fits the format of my streams. If people are saying that a minimum playthrough of this game is 60 to 80 hours long, if not longer, how on the fuck do you think that fits into my streams? I'm a variety streamer. He's going to play it on, like, the easiest difficulty, kind of like I did do I think that if I played when I played it. Endlessly, that it would work. I think people would get bored. He I is so pissed bored. off. He is so pissed off for having to play this game. It's one of the games he genuinely doesn't want to play. Genuinely doesn't want to play. He hates the idea of playing it. Because he knows within two days, the den's going to stop showing up. Super slow-paced game. He needs to, like, listen to dialogue and pretend like he gives a fuck about it. Just because everybody else is praising it so much. The whole point is to... He's already, like, done with it before he's even started. And he's supposed to bring excitement to it. He's supposed to make it hype so you show up on Monday variety and that way everything always feels fresh right but i also got to play games that keep moving that way you don't feel like when you play a game three times a week you barely made a snail's pace of progress you want to feel like you had something significant happen right if i play robocop for three hours today hopefully we get some story developments we get some side missions some fun stuff happens not oh i moved oh, i moved one bookcase right in three hours well that could be baldur's gate 3 because <clears throat> from what i'm exp being explained about the game it is a slow paced game with tons of narrative which is great oh, except no. bg3 bad because sex yeah basically that's what? like the dumbest thing ever you have sex with a bear i don't even have sex with my wife you expect me to have sex with my bear you fucking idiots progress they don't want to sit here for hours on end and nothing happens oh right? yeah there's gonna be so much saves coming oh my god whoever watches that playthrough you, you probably it's gonna take away like 10 years of your life He's going to save scum the shit out of it. Now, again, I'm not trying to set the game up for failure. I'm a realist. It literally is. He read the reviews for Avatar, but he wouldn't read them for BG3. Read one and it will tell you why it's great, but no, he wants to hate this game so bad. Exactly, dude. Exactly. He's trying to build the narrative that nobody even knows why the game is good because they're pretending that it's good because they just like it because everybody else thinks it's good. It's the same logic he uses for people that are famous for the sake of being famous, which is not really a thing. But he's trying to build that whole framework and then start 
you know, working on that narrative. Telling you, I already figured from everything you guys... Kind of like with Scott the Waz. This was the same segment as he did with Scott the Waz. I don't understand why he's popular. Tell me why he's popular. Oh, you guys can't agree that it's popular and why it's popular. So, must be that he's not actually good. He's just popular because he's popular. Told me. He could have easily watched like a five minute review like, like you said in the super chat. He could have read a review and saw what the game is really good at and then kind of understood it. But he doesn't want to understand it. It's not about that. About this game. I don't think it would work for my stream. But I'm listening to your feedback. You want it. It won And the, the explanation is simple. You're getting it right now. It just doesn't work for his stream. He doesn't want to play it. But he's feeling pressure right now. And he's going to force himself to play it. And he's going to hate it. The playthrough is going to suck, and he's not going to make any money because he's a fucking idiot. ...the year, all right, and basically it's been donated now. So every factor has lined up. I have no excuse to not play it. I'm going to play. There you go. He ran out of excuses, basically. He needs to so get sick again. Man. There's been so much stuff that people have asked for. I'll give it a shot, all right? I'm, an, I'm, you know, I'm a fair guy when so many people yell at me about it, right? Really? <laughs> I'll do it. So we're starting Monday. And I'm going to approach it with an open mind like any other game. Literally, I will not I will not be a dick about it. I'm not going to be, you know, a negative asshole to the game. I'm going to approach it like an open RPG. I'm going to, and I think people say character creation is pretty cool. We'll jump in. We'll see how the plots are. By the way, and here's the really cool part about it. I know nothing about this game. I've never played a Baldur's Gate game before. So I don't know the plot, okay, at all. I've gotten zero spoilers about it because I don't understand. I never played one. I don't know. How could you spoil me? Oh, dude. You know what I'm dude. You know, you know how you can low-key troll him? I'm not endorsing this. I'm just, let's say, um, th thinking about how you would want to troll him. You could give him spoilers for the game, I guess, because it's like a 60-hour game. If he knows already what's going to happen in the end, he's not going to like it very much. So I'm not telling that, that you should do it. Definitely don't do it. I'm not telling at all. Do not do this. Don't do this. Do not troll him. And definitely don't tell him I sent you because I didn't. This is 100% cold turkey. From cold turkey? You game. should warm up his turkey. All right. So let's find out how it's going to go. Uh, yeah. yeah, the big announcement is that he's playing Baldur's Gate on Monday. That's the big announcement. Yes, I will be very honest with you up front. If I play this game within two to three streams... Everything is falling off. People aren't showing up. People are disengaging, not even talking about the game. They're just talking about other shit. They're saying it's boring in the chat. Engagement's dead. Support is dead. No one cares about the game. No, I'm not going to fucking play this game for 100 hours. Whoa, he's so no. pissed off. Absolutely not. The thing is, if it's good, if I'm hooked on it, and I really like it, and you guys are liking it, and we're all engaged, we're having a good time, and it ends up being a great stream, I am happy to play this. But I want that atmosphere. I don't want, oh, everyone wanted it, but it was a trick because it's a fucking game that everyone knows won't work for a stream. And, and Loki, you know, Loki, he's pissed off that somebody donated the game because now he, they just gave it to him. He can't not play it. Oh, you know, it's that simple because I already feel like it won't work for my format. I've told you that. Uh, I think he's going to, he might sink until uh, at least like 10, 15 hours in the game. It's not going to die right, right away. He's about this rent. Uh, how? Oh yeah, how does the donor feel? Probably uh, not much different than usual. The gold dust from BG3 will be legendary. His, uh, the DSP fans, they got a humiliation fetish, most of them. They actually get off on, on being talked down to like this. Yeah, I've predicted that. But maybe, you know what? I would oh wow, look at this super chat. Why do you keep shouting, swearing, swearing at insulting us viewers that disagree with you? I'm a fan, but can you try being a bit more respectful? That's a the super well spoken to be proven and wrong. uh I would well love put. To be proven wrong. I love here's the thing. I love RPGs. Did you notice? <laughs> I grew up playing RPGs. It's one of my favorite genres of game. The problem is RPGs are very hard to retain attention. Let's see how he's gonna they're answer hard. it. They're hard to retain an audience. You're gonna accuse okay. it of being a troll? And by the way, I already saw are you ready for this? I already saw people in chat already setting the stage for failure. You ready? Oh, well, if he plays the game now and it doesn't do well, you can't blame the game because it's four months later. Bullshit. No, yeah, no. They're actually fucking right. They're actually right. Gee, I can play whenever the fuck I want. I didn't play every Elder Scrolls game the day it came out. He's so Man, fucking pissed off. Play that? 
What the fuck? This is so good to watch, no, man. It's such a good RPG. It should be good whenever I play it. No excuses. That could and, and he's like yelling at people that actually like him right now. This is not even a troll bringing that up. It's four months later. Oh, now people won't watch it. Fuck you. Fuck Stop you. To already make excuses for why the game will not work on my streams because you're afraid it's not going. But dipshit, bro. You you just fucking said it. It's not fitting for your streams. Like three minutes ago, he was talking about how it's not good for his streams. And if somebody else points that out, they're a fucking idiot. And then you're gonna look like an asshole. So no, I'm not taking what? Those excuses. Those excuses are invalid. If the oh, game is good, get the it's fuck out of here. Let's see if it's good starting on Monday. Fuck out of here. Simple. No more bullshit. Motherfucker! I've had enough. Talking all that bullshit. I really have. All right. So I am excited. I really am. Oh, he is excited. Yeah, I can see. Start, start this on Monday. Super you know exciting. I'll say this. I'm always someone who is willing to admit when I'm actually wrong. What? If yesterday I had said there's no chance in hell Baldur's Gate 3 is going to win game of the year. And then at one, I would say I was completely wrong. No, I said that ages ago before all the qualifying things Bro, happened. Bro, like this is the same dude who didn't even admit he was wrong when he called, uh, he outright called his viewers lazy. Because they didn't show up to his stream. And then he did an apology video that he basically doesn't apologize in. And, and I, this is the guy who always admits he was wrong? When? Was asked recently, would it win? I said, yeah, it's either Baldur's Fuck Gate. Fuck out of here. Two games that are going to win game of the year, one or the other. Right? So, no, you don't get to say it, no gotcha moments on me. I uh, see you said it wasn't going to win. This yeah, that was some like, kind of like a, shut up, you're an idiot. Like a mental okay. breakdown Thanks. segment. I would be willing to say, hey, if it works for my streams, if it's a great game, I will be happy. Do you understand? I will actually be happy to be proven wrong. I would be. I would love to have a great game in my streams. Now, I want you to understand something. We are opening a big can of worms with this, and here's why we're opening a big can of worms. Because it's a long game. In January, there's two big RPGs. Oh, my God. For schedule. Persona 3 Remake and Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, both of which are ginormous, both of which are highly anticipated, both of which everyone wants to see. How the fuck do I keep playing Baldur's Gate 3 with those games? I can't. That's the answer. I can't. Oh, There's go no fuck yourself. Why should I give a fuck? 17 RPGs at once. It's your job, dummy. You understand that, right? It's none of my business. So, keep this shit out of my that. stream. We're, again, this game is so lengthy. With my variety schedule, this is also kind of setting myself up for disaster. I don't see how I could be playing that many games at once, right? It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. If this game, if we play it and it's great, right? And now all of a sudden, it's like now we have to make a decision. Well, crap, what games am I skipping? What games am I playing? And I think this is going to come more into play because on the Christmas Marathon, December 23rd, which is coming up, by the way, it's about two weeks from tomorrow, right? Uh, that's What day is that? December 23rd. We're going to look week the by Saturday. Week hey, maybe I can restream that. It's like in two weeks. You want to see me play. And once we figure this out, you know, we're going to have to make tough decisions. This is going to be a tough one. I'm going to have to drink. I'm going to have to start drinking. This is the number three whiskey. worst moment of 2023. Oh, I, I don't know about that yet. Let's let's first see him start playing it. And it might be. It might quickly escalate. To make these tough decisions. Because he's starting to play it on Monday. I love these games. That's going to be sad to say. Maybe it's going to be one long, long bad, bad moment. moment. You know, what are we going to do? So it's going to be a rough one. You know, we'll have to talk about this and figure this out together. All right. No, I actually loved Persona 3 until the, the final dungeon. The final dungeon is the only part of Persona 3 that's complete bullshit. The game is, is incredibly good up to that point, and then the ending is terrible. It's like, why the fuck did they make it like that? It's just annoying as shit. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so... Can we well, actually get into the Game Starting Awards Monday, thing? It's Baldur's Gate 3 premiering. Monday night will be more Street Fighter. Tuesday will be more RoboCop. Tuesday night will be like a dragon guiding and then Wednesday's open Wednesday we could do more Baldur's Gate we could do Battle Royale and Modern Warfare uh, you know we could do Street Fighter whatever you guys want I'm assuming if the Monday stream goes well oops we're picking the ear we're wiping it off very nice Wednesday. nobody even that, saw to make this very clear that's the schedule Robo nobody Cop, noticed you guys Baldur's Gate, some Battle Royale and or multiplayer of Modern Warfare 3 mixed in Street Fighter 6 and like a dragon guiding that's it that's the year like, that's, there's no time for other games now. You get that? That will be what we're doing for the rest of the month. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we got a holiday event coming up 
for the Christmas weekend. That's going to be fun and special. But that's it. Don't Please don't start asking for other random games out of nowhere now. There's no time. <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be incredibly fucking... time-consuming because of the kind of game it is. I would, you know what? what I, I, I want to coin the term schedule schizophrenia because this is exactly what it is. He's being super schizophrenic about his own schedule, and it, it also alliterates because, you know, they start with the same sound. That's uh, a pretty good term, you guys. You should start using it. All right. So I'm willing to bite the bullet on this one. I'm giving you, you should bite the bullet in real life. All circumstances have come together, right? So the game is on every console. The game has been reviewed well everywhere. The game just won game of the year. You guys keep asking for it, and someone donated it. If I didn't play this game at this point, I would be a complete asshole. Right? Yeah, you but I mean you already are a complete ass. Nor am I obligated to love it and keep playing it. So let's see how it goes starting on Monday. Okay? Correct. Is that fair enough? Uh sure, so. bro. Sure. I hope that's fair. I hope you guys, you know, I'm I'm listening. We're at the point of of the, the podcast where I just say okay to everything just so he can shut up and keep moving. To you. Even though he can't hear me when I say okay, you know, it's like a subconscious thing. Remember, old Phil, this never would happen. Old Phil would have told you guys, I'm not playing this game, fuck this game. Bro, what go fuck yourself. He was the biggest video. fucking dick listening. licker when he was All Old right, Phil. Everything. Old Phil was the biggest fucking cock muncher. He would play everything that he saw that had views in it. Come on, old fucking Phil. Old Phil was just as spineless as this dude. Literally, everything is pointing towards playing this goddamn game that I'm gonna play it. Okay? So... And he was still stubborn. See. It took him like four let's months. see how it goes starting on Monday. So get your, mark your calendars, set your clocks, get out your smartphone, pull out your, your cocks, pocket, get your little fucking smart watches, program it into there. Oh yeah, here right, I got my smart watch. So when you look in the mirror, it reflects, look. it says Monday, Baldur's Gate on DSP Gaming. Make, be here. Because the way you guys hype this goddamn oh, game, you're He's better losing be his mind over BG3. You love to see it. Oh, he's losing his mind. He hasn't even started playing the game yet. Imagine what's going to happen the first slow stream. The moment he got like 10 bucks on a stream and he's playing Baldur's Gate 3, he's going to be pissed off. We're looking at the next scorn, potentially. Not to get you too hyped up, but potentially. Thousand viewers on that stream. <laughs> Seriously. And we got as some much fake as you laughs. Guys asked for this game. This better be like the hottest stream of the year, right? Seriously, I mean it too. Everyone better fucking be here. Everyone. And your mother. Tell your mother to be on watching that stream. Tell your family to be on. Tell your dog to buy an iPad and be on that fucking stream. Wow, what a comedic genius, dude. You get it? It's funny because your dog can actually watch the stream and understand what's going on because it's a dog. You work Mondays? Bud Walton says he works Mondays. You're taking Monday off, for God's sakes. You're taking that fucking day off, and you're going to be here on this stream. Oh, my God. This is the worst banter. <laughs> All of a sudden, Literally the worst. The, the, the crippling illness. You can't make it. You got to be here. The worst banter. You understand me? And it's like, I, I know he, he thinks this is, like, really funny. He thinks this is super over right now. <laughs> He's getting a huge pop. Oh, my God. Uh, now, guys, again, don't take it so seriously. I'm a joker. You know I'm messing around He's with you. He's a joker. Please tell me you're, uh, you know I'm messing around with you. He's messing you know around. I don't like when people mess around with me. It's out of context. And there's nothing I can do about that. They'll do whatever they want. But I'm not going to change my, my, my personality because of those idiots. I'm joking. This is all a joke. It's meant to be silly. I hope you understand. But I, that, I really appreciate that you guys gave me the feedback you gave me this year. I do. Because without your feedback, I wouldn't know what to do. And I'm willing to give it a shot. I am. now. now Bro, imagine being like working the same job for 15 years and without somebody explicitly telling you what to do, you have no idea what to do. Just fucking imagine that. 15 years. The time. If, if we're going to do it, now would be the time. We finally finished all the major releases of the year, right? They're all wrapped up. Now it's the end of the year. We have some time between now and basically like maybe the first, second week of January to play stuff like this. So now's the perfect time to give it a shot. Now, the problem is it's a game so long, there's no way we're going to finish it, right? But at least we'll at least get a chunk into it. And then we can go back to it later, Hello, whatever Lord. we want to do. He might have the worst comedic timing on Earth. I swear, dude, it's so fucking bad. And it's not just bad, it's... It, it, it's Hello, super predictable, too. When there's a nude woman rolling on the floor laughing. Hopefully. Hopefully. It's going to give him, like, a, a seizure. Make that judgment Hello, later. Lord. I thought he hated Kojima. Well, I, I we're going to get into that. It's interesting. He said he was excited for the Jordan Peele and Kojima collab game, but 
He doesn't like Kojima, so we're gonna get to that. I'm also super surprised there was nothing on Death Stranding 2 on the Game Awards. They basically pretended like it doesn't exist. That you got You literally had Kojima there in a person, and he was just rambling about this new thing that nobody else knows what it was. I was just pretending to be the godded. That's a DSP excuse. Or I was I was retarded in character. That was my character. Old Phil. Here, to understand I couldn't just drop everything that was going on for Baldur's Gate 3 because they decided to drop a console port of it in like the mid-September. It was like, what am I supposed to do? Right? So I'm happy. Thank you for understanding. And now we're going to give it a shot. All right, now. What I'd like to do, because we're going to do shout outs, but we got to remember, I do shout outs at the end of the stream. I'd like to open up the stream. Let's open up. Right, Can I come in? To questions about the Game Awards. You guys are just going to be able to ask me questions. About okay, I'm going to go get some beer because it's going to be insufferable. All right. But at least uh, I've seen the Game Awards. Quick reminders. At least. Number one, please nominate games for the Christmas event, which is December 23rd. Baldur's Gate 3 is already being played. So the, everyone who nominated Baldur's Gate 3, thanks, but it's already being played. Now we need other games for the Christmas event. So please nominate other video games to be played for the Christmas Marathon, which is Saturday, December 23rd. You can do that by typing exclamation point Christmas into the chat right now, or by going to the members only thread that's available on the main channel page of this channel. If you are a channel member, please post up your nominations. I need more of those. Basically, it's going to go for like another week and a half, and then I'm going to do a poll to determine the winners that'll be played. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, please keep nominating your favorite playthroughs of the year in the best of 2023 thread. You can access that by Okay, this is getting skipped. Thing, and then a big dip it sucks. Oh, no, he's begging for members. Let's see this beg because he's doing the weird open eye type of thing. Okay, and then uh, at the end of the year, I'm going to tally up the most nominated games, and that's going to be a part of my year-end series. All right, last thing I'll say, please support the stream. As you can see, sadly, we had a dip in members. Oh, it's not even just, members lost please, members, payoff. just please give me money in any way. And then a big dip it sucks because we had great momentum. We're heading, you know, higher and higher. Please consider becoming a member or gifting a membership today. And as you know, every stream, I try to hit the tier one tips goal. If we can exceed that today, great. But thank you in advance for any contributions on the stream. All right, enough with the baloney. This I'm was a pretty portable right day. Now. It was a pretty... About the game. Pretty laid back default, begging man. segment. Thoughts on Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty being in so many categories. He scrolled off the screen. So many categories, despite it being a DLC. Uh, you know, listen. It's not I just the DLC. It it's a 2.0. So it's because the original game was a disappointment. So this was that game time to shine, right? Let's be honest. Like, people finally got to say, hey, it's getting the recognition that it finally deserves because they fixed it. If the original game had been great, it probably would have had just as many, if not more, nominations the year it came out years ago, but it, it was a, a flop. It was a, a disappointment. It was unfinished, right? I think that's why that happened. Do I agree with the DLC getting that many nominations? No, 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 no. I didn't he play hasn't it. played it. I don't care about it. So. He hasn't played it since the original like 1.0 one, uh, 1 release okay. after some oh, basic patches. See. Your thoughts on Marvel's Blade game? Did you see the Blade movies? I've seen the Blade movies. Uh, I did not see gameplay of the game. I, I mean, a Blade game... There was no like, gameplay. I don't know. It's made by Arcane. Now I don't know how I feel about it. Their last few outings have sucked ass. You, usually I would like Arcane. Like, the Dishonored, the Dishonored games are good. Um, yeah, big spoiler. There's several Arcane studios. And um, Arcane Leon, which is the French one, actually made the cool games. And the shitty games were made by Austin. And I think there's one shitty game, which is Redfall, but this was made by Arcane Austin. Just, just a little bit of context. Game, so I don't know how to feel about it. I hope it's good, though. Uh, am I interested in Visions of Mana? Just because uh, I'm saying this just because the gaming professional is not going to say this. And not only not going to say this, but get it wrong. That one surprised me. I did not expect them to actually make a direct inline... By the way, tomorrow my microphone is coming, so I might get the chance to test it out. What? And then they had a spin-off game? I wasn't expecting them to continue the series. I guess what happened is the remake of Secret of Mana and then the spinoff game bolted really well. So they decided to make a whole new sequel. Like, okay. Uh, it looks pretty good. It actually looks good to me because, you know, I like the original Secret of Mana. I played it in the 90s. I rented it several times. I, I really like the game. Um, so, yeah, I'm actually down for that. I'm down for the continuation of any classic Square, Square franchises from the 90s, and that's one. So, I, yeah, that's good for me. Thoughts of Spider-Man 2 winning zero awards? Not shocked. It's journalists who vote. Journalists are not into those games. They're not. Why not? I mean, now here's the thing. This is the perfect journalist game. Really do anything amazing. It's super well, basic. It's fake deep. Open world realism. 
meaning it looks that great. New York City representation is the best we've ever seen in any video game. And the free flowing without any loading to go through the city at any time was amazing, right? Outside of that, the story was good. The graphics were good. The gameplay was good. But did anything like, oh my god, knock my socks off, never seen anything this good before? Eh. Because some people are still arguing that the Arkham franchise is better. Uh, I would say that Spider-Man 2 is the best video, uh, uh, the best comic book video game we've ever had. I, I will stand by that statement. I think it is. But I think for the time, Arkham was amazing. So, but yeah, it's journalists. Journalists don't vote for fucking, uh, you know, no. they'll, they'll nominate it. But there no, even... actually, the this makes no sense. Uh, I think Spider-Man 2 is the perfect game journalist game because it's easy. There is a lot of stuff that looks easy to pull off. And um, you, you got a story that is very progressive. And game journalists love that. It's a huge studio. So... Everything kind of goes against his point. It doesn't really make much sense. For for game of the year, they're not gonna award it. It's like they're perfect, just perfect. Was wool garbage and Houston made it. Uh, yeah, I didn't know even Houston exists. So there you go. You know what I mean? I I've played it for like an hour. I didn't care about the gunplay, and I just dropped it. Thoughts on Street Fighter Six winning game of the year? Or excuse me, Street Fighter Six winning fighting game of the year? Why wouldn't it? It it was a shoe in to begin with. It has. In my opinion, the best graphics of any fighting game this year. Some people disagree. I think it does. Has the best online connectivity of any fighting game this year. It actually completely refixed. It fixed all the issues with Street Fighter V. It really did. Did he it play the other ones? More viable for competitive communities, for the casual community. It has more content. I mean, look at all the content in that game. Offline content. Even if you're not going online, there's insane amounts. Then you could go and play with your avatar online and dick around. The game is made for everyone. They, they sure, yeah. They completely fixed all their mistakes from the last gen. That's great. Okay, I played some of the other fighting games like Mortal Kombat 1, pfft, disappointment. Competitively a trash game, bad connections online, what are you going to do? Uh, how can you even say that that was going to be, you know, the winner? The funny part was, Ed Boon, you know, the guy primarily in charge of Mortal Kombat, was a presenter. Oh yeah, he was actually there. He had to sit in that audience and basically grind his teeth to see Street Fighter 6 win and his game lose, even though he probably thought he was going to win because he's buddy-buddy with a bunch of games journalists. He is. He's really buddy-buddy. And he probably thought, oh, maybe if I get really friendly this year, my game will win. <laughs> really? Nope. But, oh. Phil, I thought you just said that the game awards mean nothing and they're super subjective and they're just a, a game journal journalist circle jerk. Oh, well. Why would it be so important for Ed Boon to win a fucking award? Let's continue. Thoughts on the new Dragon Ball Z game? I and I, I hate all the looks he was making during this segment where he's like looking smugly into the camera as if he knows that's exactly what Ed Boon has been thinking about. Played some of the other fighting games like Mortal Kombat 1. Like, look at this. It starts from here. Look at all these just the looks directly into the camera. It's so insufferable. It's so like... Frustration inducing. You know, the guy primarily in charge of Mortal Kombat was a presenter at the awards. So he had to sit in that audience and basically grind his teeth. Look at how fucking smug he is every time somebody he doesn't like take an L. Fighter 6 win in his game. Every game. time. You know, he probably thought he was going to win because he's... The little greasy smile. Look at this. ...with a bunch of games journalists. He and the, the nice little, like, you know, raising his eyebrows for more emphasis. He's really what a fucking disgusting piece of shit dragon ball i haven't seen dragon ball super i don't really care quite frankly How do I feel about and this is why he's getting cyber bullied for life basically it's never gonna stop it's only gonna get worse because this dude people hate him just because he fucking exists just the way he exists pisses people off and this is like it's borderline a superpower God award at this point in a few days from what I saw... What like, I all he has to do in his life is be himself, and people will naturally just hate the shit out of him. Of it, it's not an actual story continuation. He doesn't even have to be wrong about stuff. He made a bunch of combat challenges, right? Which is why it's free. If this had a major story element to it, if it was actually a major chunky DLC that continued the plot, then it would be actually set, sold, right? But it looks like what all they did um, was they added... A bunch of combat challenges in this Valhalla atmosphere, and that's what it is. So for me, do we really want to see me play that game again just to do a bunch of combat? You know how boring and repetitive and grindy that would be? Probably not very fun. For people who love the game and its combat, you probably really would enjoy that. So go for it, and it's free. You can't complain about something that's free. But for me, it doesn't look that good. It's just a combat challenge mode from what I saw. 
So. <clears throat> All right. Thoughts on the quick Sega games being remade? That looked amazing to me. My wife and I both were like, no way. She loves Crazy Taxi. She's like, Crazy so Taxi she's crazy? coming back? And I'm like, that's Golden Axe only in 3D. Holy shit, that's a new Shinobi game? Oh, I couldn't believe it. And she couldn't believe it. We were very stoked to see these new Sega games being, being made. So, hey. so It's like all of a sudden Sega remembered, oh, wait a minute. We actually make games. Did you know that? Oh, let's fucking make some. Well, it's about fucking time. What were you doing all these years? <laughs> all right good make some fucking video games thoughts on jurassic park survival which takes place two days oh that looks first. mid that looked great to me really it literally looked really good because it's the same exact location as the original Jurassic. oh of, of course bro the fucking of course look at the way he says it nostalgia. nostalgia he loves the nostalgia bait stuff everything that that makes him feel like he's living back in the past when he loved his life more than he does now amazing it's like a 10 out of 10 Dude, this is based on off of something that I like from the 80s, and it references it? I fucking love it. Or the 90s. If you love that movie, which I he's, do, I've seen that movie. He's like a, he's a fiend for stuff that reference other stuff. He's basically like a nostalgia critic. It's a great movie. It's going to be really cool to recognize the dinosaurs and, and the things from that movie. Looks great. And if it's truly a first-person survival game with, like, it's a story and everything, I think it's going to be outstanding. To me, it looked exactly like Alien Isolation, but with a Jurassic Park skin. Joe Law says, to be fair, it was a killer game year. The competition was brutal. Spider-Man 2 could have had a bigger chance if games like Alan Wake 2 and Baldur's Gate 3 hadn't come out this year. That is correct. Yeah, and you're going to recognize the dinosaurs. Dude, this is the the T-Rex. Phil's the kind look. of guy you look at and think he would look great under a steamroller in Minecraft, but Hurl also. Yeah. Yeah, he's the, the, he's the type of guy where... You would see an NPC in a video game and pretend that it's him and then just experiment with the physics mechanics and the ragdoll mechanics. Thoughts of the Kojima segment? Like I, I already said earlier, I think that was one of the biggest highlights of the night to know that Kojima is not just making Death Stranding 2. I, I think that, that was, was one of the low points of the and night. It wasn't at all. It was a whole new game. We don't know what the fuck it's going to be besides horror. The fact that he's collaborating with Jordan Peele, a real-life director of horror movies that are popular... And not very scary. An actual real fan of video games who plays them and not just saying that. How do you know? That he's going to collaborate with Kojima and Kojima saying, no, we're actually teaming up with other big people as well. We're going to have this big, insane artistic collaboration to make the most unique game ever. Sounds good to me. I like uniqueness. Alan Wake 2 this year. I like uniqueness. Coming from the guy that just said in the start of the stream, it was a bunch of indie games. Uh, nobody fucking cares. It's all fucking stupid. Bullshit. Yeah, he likes uniqueness. That's that's why he only plays the slop. He only plays the triple A slop tastic games. Here had some of the biggest Cuz he loves uniqueness. Any video game I will remember those. I will remember flashing between two different scenes with a lamp that makes the entire situation change and changing scenes to be horror and things. I will remember the giant dance number with a real band playing and live action people. I will remember all of that because it's unique. That's what we need, more uniqueness and not people just following the fucking outline of this is what the game's supposed to be and people will buy it if we just... Uh, you don't play those games, Phil, so you don't help them succeed. If anything, you kind of bash them and you bring them down. ...things that we check off the list. No, we need more unique experiences. We do. Yeah. Now, the ca the challenge here is to make the unique... Then a any anytime a unique experience comes up, when we talk about, what was this, uh, Lethal Company? Is that how it was called? The new party game? It's, kind of, it's not much of a party game. It's, you know, a co-op type of unique, interesting game. When Among Us came out, he's just bashing that. And they become, those games become popular for a reason because people enjoy them and like playing them with friends. But he keeps bashing them. He doesn't actually, if you look at his actions and the way he treats those games, he doesn't want them to be successful. He just likes sucking on fucking big corpos cock and playing all the AAA sloptastic video games. Experience is and, and in the end, shitting on them. But if you keep buying them, it doesn't matter if you're shitting on them in your little stream. And the problem is, with Death Stranding, the story was amazing, the graphics were outstanding, and the, the gameplay was terrible. What Kojima needs to do is find that balance, where it's fun to play, but it's also fun to experience. Like, everything has to be fun. He didn't do that with Death Stranding. He has to nail that with OD. I think he's getting better at it, so hopefully this will be amazing. We'll find out. No, I but think OD is going to have way less gameplay than Death well, Stranding. The finals. Fuck no. Don't see a reason to. Not my style of game. Don't really care about it. The finals is a game for these streamers who all they do is play first-person shooter games. They just need another one. 
put in variety so it's not just Call of Duty all the time. You know, I don't really give a shit about it. If you guys wanted to see me play it as a, as a, as a one-off stream or something to try it, I would. If it's free, I'm not buying it. Hell no. <clears throat> what do I think about the Ronin game? It looked good with Rise of the Ronin, right? Looks good from uh, Team Ninja, right? And I think it's only... Was it Team Ninja? Yep. It looked really good to me. Because it didn't look like Dark Souls because that they had big, like special abilities and things. It didn't so look like Dark Souls. Dark Souls. But it was kind of... I don't know. It can't, it's Dark Souls. Games. There were no energy bars or anything, so you can't see what? how tough the game was. How brain damaged is this dude? Um, but PlayStation exclusive, right? Um, and it comes out next year. March? Looked It looked pretty good to me. Whoa, it's I like... I like it. Uh, I don't know if it looks like Dark Souls or not. The woman in the Jurunakon world game is basically Mia Khalifi. Can't wait for the modders to get a hold of that game. But why why don't you just go watch Mia Khalifa videos? You can literally just see her get fucking her ass cheeks clapped and stuff. Why would you have to wait for the Jurassic Park game? Just just go watch the real thing, dude. <laughs> and imagine there's like dinosaurs in the room. I appreciate the guy's talent and I absolutely love real life musicians. I hate when they try so hard to make memes out of it. So because the guy is talented and uses different, you know, uh, instruments, let's just keep showing him. Let's have him ham it up and act up. It's like, can we just have music? Do I have to have, like, I understand, but do we have to have, like, 100 characters playing the music? Like, do we need to have fucking Big Bird playing the trombone and, you know, fucking, uh, I don't know, Johnny Depp playing a guitar and then the fucking flute guy going crazy? You know, do we need a million characters? The flute guy music? going crazy. <laughs> Sometimes he just wants some music, right? Pretty ridiculous. All the musical stuff on the show was pretty how do, cringe. How do, how do, Actually, no, the... Um, how was it called? The, I it was the Hellblade song and dance routine was very good. Donna Alloway's dance but the Alan Wake... Obviously, he lip synced because... Oh, he's he going to talk about that. Was actually there he really thought that was actually good. He was just lip syncing and dancing, but it was cool to see it. You already saw it in the game, and then you get to see it actually performed on stage, proving that these guys have massive talent and could actually do this as like a live stage show too. Yeah, like, just because cool. you can do it doesn't mean you should. Thoughts on LEGO Fortnite? I have none. I, I mean, it's a kid's game. Good for them. If you ever wanted to prove... Because the, the thing is, they didn't allow for the developers to be thankful of stuff when they were receiving their awards, but they had like five minutes to spare for a, a dumbass sing and dance, song and dance routine from Alan Wake that was like profoundly cringe. Fortnite was a game made for kids. Lego Fortnite. That's all you gotta say. From now on, whenever someone says, man, you know, that Fortnite game, you know, no, what are you talking about? That every streamer tried to cater to kids. And every, the whole game is towards kids and microtransactions. Well, where's your evidence? Lego Fortnite. Oh, shit. All right. What? Well, you win. What? That's all you gotta say. You're done. You walk away. Is this the evidence that it's for kids? Is that there's Lego in the game? Really? That's your... your... That's your... Smoking gun? <laughs> you put your hat out? Such a stupid anymore. fucking Fuck. argument. All right, done. Fortnite's been for kids for the last, like, what, since since it literally came out? Uh, I don't know if I'll try any new Monster Hunter. As you know, I was 100% gung-ho to do Monster Hunter World. I played the demo. People hated it. Absolutely hated it. Found it insanely boring. I, play, I had a whole stream scheduled, three plus hours of this Monster Hunter World demo, co-op. With, with with other people. And we're playing it, and within an hour and a half, everyone complained this game is the worst game ever. Stop playing it, play something else. They actually wanted me to stop the demo stream to play oh, it. Oh, I, 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 I don't... I, I'm not buying this. Work. was probably uh, like three people in chat. A, if there's another demo for the new Monster Hunter game, and we try it again, we'll see. I'm going to give it a shot, but there's no way I'm jumping in head first into that game and buying it and everything when people hated the last one. So, I just gave my thoughts on Rise of the Ronin. I guess you missed them. Does that mean the Star Wars games I played this year is for kids because I had a Lego game? Huh? What does that even mean? I don't even understand what that means. Lego games are primarily designed for children. That is true. Now, there could be some adult appeal, but they are primarily designed for children. Every once in a while, I've played one. Why? Variety. It's good to have that kind of variety on my streams. It breaks stuff up. Not every game is for a mature audience. Yeah, right? no. I... But, yeah. I don't think they're necessarily for children. I would say they're family games for all ages because you can be you can be my age and like them. You can be older and like them. You can be a kid and like them. It's kind of a family friendly game for everybody. When you outright get a game like Fortnite and I say, "Well, it's so we're making kitty kitty Fortnite, Lego Fortnite." Yeah, kitty Fortnite. Kids. I get it. That's fine. 
It's okay to admit it. What's hilarious is this group of adults who play this game so much, they won't admit it's for kids. They just, you know, it's fine. But you why does it matter? Things as an adult that are intended for children. You understand that, right? Okay. It happens all the time. People still like Charlie Brown. People still like fucking SpongeBob. Do you think that was written for you? It's written for kids. But it's okay to enjoy it. It's fine. What about Matthew McConaughey time up there? Oh, bro, it was the worst. I think, um, I think Anthony Mackie was worse. But Matthew McConaughey... I mean, the dude just showed up to announce that he's getting paid for some video game, and then they played like a an in in engine trailer where nothing was basically explained, except that it's I think some kind of third person uh, shoot 'em up. Puppets, hell, I love puppets, thing. but it's for kids. But just admit it. It's time to stop fucking trying to make excuses. Oh yeah, we actually didn't hear his voice. That's a good point. Everything cartoony says the streamers dyed their fucking hair. Oh my god, he hates everything, dude. Why won't you just admit that? Thoughts on Atlas's new IP? Do you mean the one that starts with M, I think? It looks great. I forgot the name of it. It looks great. It's basically all the stuff you liked about Persona thrown into a medieval atmosphere with fantasy. I love it. Looks great to me. I can't I'm excited for more information about it. I want to play it. It looks great to me. Yeah, I told you. I'm a huge fan of RPGs. To huge see that fan. Makes me happy. Gigantic. That makes me very excited. <clears throat> the pre-show sucked the pre-show was 30 minutes of boredom nothing interesting insanely bad lines written by the presenter she every time she delivered a, a cringy line you had to feel bad like what the fuck happened here who wrote this crap and what they did is they crammed a bunch of awards in 30 minutes and none of the awards really got the recognition they deserved which is really sad because oh wow hold on be getting attention for we need to get a we get a haircut check awards in 30 minutes and none of the awards really got the recognition they deserve we got a hair update you guys um it's not doing well it's not doing well i'm afraid it's LEGO terminal game rent brought to you by a dude who rage quit a lego game yeah brought to you by a dude who's playing disney dreamlight valley a dude who played monkey banana ball or whatever the fuck it was called and he's he's the one talking about things being for uh for kids which is really sad and people are in denial. Why the fuck does it even matter if Fortnite is for kids or not? Why does it matter? It's it's a fucking family-friendly game. Anybody can play it. I know people that play it with their kids. They absolutely should be getting attention for some of these awards, like the Accessibility Award, which, by the way, Forza Motorsport won, which is Brandon Cole. You remember Super Blind Man, who used to be a fan of mine and watch all my stuff, and he hasn't been around for a while because he's so busy now with work. Oh, he's yeah. Accessibility work, which is outstanding. Um, he won. He even got a name call out. On yeah, the big show, ups. Which was amazing to see. Big ups, super blind a dude. Part of my streams now actually getting recognition on the show. I'm so proud of him, and I want to give him a. But a, what is he trying to claim some of that clout? Shout out and a, tell, let him know how much publicly I'm proud of him for the work he's doing. It's almost like Phil helped Brandon. To get to the level where he is now. He used to be one of my guys on my stream, you guys. And now he leveled up. It's really awesome. Which, I mean, that's kind of how it is, but... <clears throat> come on, just give the guy a shout-out. It's not like you raised the guy. Okay. And uh, I love the narrative that Super Blind Man hasn't shown up because he just got too much work. He would love to watch all of Phil's content. He just has too much work, man. He can't do it. But the new Persona 3 trailer they showed, am I interested in playing it because it looks like Persona 5? Yes, but I can't play it. There's no time. How do you expect me to start Baldur's Gate 3 this month? Play that. Play like a dragon. The pre-show was boring. Welcome to the Level 1 podcast. Yeah, man. I, I, I think the girl in the pre-show did very well. In general, the whole night. Because that being a presenter in a show like this is very hard. Especially having like a live chat and people talking about her. I think she did a great job. God bless her heart. Infinite wealth. Play Final it was Fantasy boring, Fantasy. This is what I mean. but These are the decisions we have to make. It's a pre-show. Sadly, games have to be cut. What game's going to be cut? The game I already played. Even if it's a remake that looks and plays like Final Big ups uh, for the I super chat. Logan, Plus Joe that, Blow, and Derek Hill. In Cope side Phil. Issues on YouTube, so it's the easy one to cut. I forgot to call Sorry out your say. names, dudes. I have no idea what the hell Light No Fire is. No, I didn't even think she was that hot. I'm just saying, you know, she's a nice girl. She did a good job. That weren't. Uh, I mean, the one thing everyone was expecting was the Elden Ring DLC or at least some update 
on something from from software and they were not even there in any capacity you know like whoa what the hell like really so i don't know what happened there i don't know if they just have nothing to say or there was a falling out between them and jeff Keeley because remember summer game fest is where they blew up all their information about Elden Ring a couple of years ago. That's where they got that E three got snubbed. Jeff got the the, the scoop, so it was shocking that uh, they weren't there at all. Everyone thought they were going to be there. Den of Wolves. I don't know what that is either. Don't know what Den of Wolves is. Already talked about Spider Man two not winning any awards. Did I enjoy the Final Fantasy VII stuff? Yes, you want to know why? Did you notice when they were showing gameplay, it looks completely different from Final Fantasy VII now. The first game, all right, you didn't know that this was a new story. You thought it was just Final Fantasy VII Remake. You thought it was Final Fantasy VII. And it was until the end. And then the story changed and veered in a different multiverse direction. Now we know. The plot line's been changed, and it looks like tons of stuff is going to be different in this one, right? Oh, there was tons of shit in it. I Aaron's want to like, mail him that? the Kaczynski special and make him paranoid of being donated anything. The blinds, the PC, the grocer cart. What's next? Kaboom. He already is super paranoid about being donated stuff. That's why you gotta go through like a multi-step process. Even if you want to send him like a physical yeah. video game, you need to go through like a screening procedure. You ha pretty much gotta give him all your info for him to be safe. What the hell is that? None of that's... He's acting like he's running away from somebody's government. Like, he betrayed a government. He's like a traitor. And he's living in Russia and the U.S. government trying to send Hitman after him. It's pretty crazy. Final Fantasy VII. So, I'm excited because essentially we're getting a new Final Fantasy game. We're getting a brand new one. And by the way, it's going to be good, unlike Final Fantasy XVI. So, I'm pumped. Makes me excited. Uh, okay, I'm waiting for more questions because some of these were scrolled off the screen and were weird. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Joel Law says, I was surprised to see the best performance go to Asterion and Baldur's Gate 3. Did you prefer another nominee? I don't know because I didn't, see, I didn't see Baldur's Gate 3. You can't make a judgment on something like that until you know all the nominees. I didn't, I haven't played it, so I can't say anything, you know. Of, of the nominees there that I knew, uh... You know, probably the guy who was the lead actor of Star Wars did an insanely good job. Really? He's the the glue that holds that game together. Really? Right? He's super He's mid. In that role. Super bland. Maybe him. Profoundly bland. Oh, no, and in bad. general, that game that that's the reason I never finished it is it's so fucking bland. It's so just sloppy and generic, and it's just like the first one, but you know, expanded. It just doesn't fucking work. And that main character, man, is so boring. Just such a bland guy. You mean the real life uh, power armor? It looks neat. <laughs> alert. I really enjoyed the January recap stream. Hey, thanks, when dude. is the next one? Um, I don't know. Maybe tomorrow. If my microphone comes, I would like to try it. And if I have time, probably tomorrow. But we'll see. Big up Stay for the subscription, dude. We, must, we probably fast forwarded through it. We probably just went zoop like that. Because any game... I mean, there's so many games presented. They look exactly like every other fucking game. They're not doing anything original. Oh, look, another fantasy RTS. Oh, look, another fantasy game that looks like all the others we played. Oh, look, another FPS, another FPS. And they're all team-based, and they're all bullshit. They're all the same game. There's so few games today that try to do something original, and that's the problem. When you say, oh, it goes into this bucket, toss it in, and ignore it. Look, goes into this bucket, toss it over your shoulder, and ignore it. Uh, did he play even a single one of all the nominees for Best Indie Game? Because that's the original, unique ones, right? Did he play a single one? We're talking about Dave the Diver, Dredge, Cocoon. Uh, what was it? Pizza Tower? Was that how it was called? Yeah, I don't think he played a single one of them. For somebody who loves innovative, unique games made by people with creativity, talent, and passion. We need original games, and those things don't interest me at all. They make me fucking fall asleep. <clears throat> Yeah, I know Persona 3 Reloaded is day one game pass. What's your point? I, I still can't play it. Number one, Atlas. I'll get copyright issues. Number two, I'm going to be playing other new games. It's not a new game. It's a remake of a game I've already played. So.
Uh, Wukong next August. That I was happy to finally get an actual release date for the Wukong game. This is the game. <clears throat> yeah, that game looks like it rocks. Based on Journey to the West, that looks like it's an action game, a hybrid of maybe like Dark Souls, but also like, you know, a Neo or a game like that. Oh, so it's um, Dark Souls. And finally to have a release date. It's like, dude, we've been hearing about this game for how many years? Like five years? Um, I, I want to issue a challenge to DSP. Completely hypothetical, because of course he's not going to take it. Describe a game without actually comparing it directly to a different game. Can we do that? Is he capable enough to actually describe the mechanics, atmosphere, n narrative structure of a game without calling it a different game that already exists? Because every game is like, it's either Dark Souls or it's open world, like there's a Grand Theft Auto, or it's a, a turn-based RPG like Persona or something like that. Finally, to have that information was very exciting to me. I was like, yes, now we have something for the summer that's going to be great, right? <clears throat> Perhaps Wukong... Which, of course, makes me think of um, the Hot Tevin video. Hold on. Uh, Tevin Bloodborne. Am I going to find it here? I think so. Oh, yeah, this one. Think Bloodborne, the honest review. This is just a review of, I don't even know what, Bloodborne? But we just, these are all the mentions of Dark Souls or Bloodborne. Is just like 20 minutes of just comparing it to something else that exists. Next, Lies of P. That would be amazing. <clears throat> Thoughts on the Switch missing out on all the cool games coming out? Well, uh, yeah. They need, to, they need to come out with a console that can handle games. I mean, the first party games, but they didn't have anything first party to announce, right? So, I guess this next year will be a dead year for the Switch. And then probably like 2025, they'll come out with a new console. And then all of a sudden, it'll be an insanely prominent year for Nintendo again. This always happens with Nintendo's life cycle. At first, they're hot. Then mid-cycle, they get some stuff. They lose some stuff. They're hot. At the end of the cycle, they have nothing. And then the new game, the new console comes out, and they get a big boost again. So, Am I hopeful that the new Fallout show will be good? Yes. No. Will it be good? I have no idea. But I'm hopeful it will Oh, be by the way, good. remember when we watched the event and they said we're going to get a preview or like a sneak peek at the Fallout show and they basically replayed the trailer but with a couple of extra shots of other stuff going on. It was so underwhelming. They showed almost nothing new. Have it be good. I, and I'm going to be watching it along with all of you on Amazon Video and I'll be reviewing the episodes. Yes, I will be a part of that fun next year for sure. Oh, he's going to do the Angry Joe thing. But by himself and pathetic. Thoughts on celebrities that were there? Well, here's the thing, okay? Basically, when you look at who they had, you could tell the difference between the people who were there because they're actually a fan of video games and the people that were there because they take a paycheck or they want to be prominent and be known as hip or whatever. Oh, then you should you know? go there. I mean, a lot of people, sadly, gave Anthony Mackie a lot of shit. He went out there and he tried to have like a Keanu moment and it didn't work at all. He was insanely cringy trying to react to people in the audience. Yep. But no one and I usually love the guy. On the mic, so no one knew who was saying what or anything, nor did they know what the hell he was talking about. He basically just kept screaming at the audience like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. no one knew what he was saying. Like, what? Like, what is going on? He fe it, it was very, very embarrassing for him, I feel. Um, the other weird part about it... I, I don't think he's very embarrassed. He's an actor. It's his whole job to pretend to do things he doesn't necessarily want to do or make him look good. So I don't think he's that embarrassed. I don't think he's having a mental breakdown behind the scenes. Uh, I like the guy. I think he's one of the more underrated, like, B-list celebrities. But it was very cringe. It took way too long. Not, not a fan. That whole segment, not a fan. I guess this... Twisted Metal show did so well on Paramount Plus, but no one really talks about it. So it's so odd because it came out. Oh, it's good, but who talked about it? It's like, what is the criteria for a show to be a, a popular? Well, bro, this is this is how it works in the age of streaming. When an, an entire season comes out at once, people just binge watch it within two days. They talk about the thing for like a week, and then it's like it never happened. It happened like that with Squid Game, and that shit was super viral. And like three, four months later, it's like... Uh, you, you talk to somebody, they don't even know that Squid Game came out this year. You're getting another season when no one even talked about the first season. That's just how it is. Fucking odd. Um, but, you know, again, Matthew McConaughey comes out. Oh, I'm going to be part of this space game. That's great. And then they showed a trailer and he's not in it. Yeah. It's like, so you paid the actor to be there to promote your game, but you didn't even show the part of the game he's in? Like, No, Squid Game came out 
like right. two years ago or something. Do you really think that Matthew McConaughey ever fucking played these games? Really? Do you believe that? I don't. No. <laughs> I don't believe that at all. I'm sorry. It's just not believable to me. You know? Um. So that's the weird thing. They always try to get that that weird mix. They do. They try to get that very odd mix. And it's weird because you always got to be skeptical. What is this person or celebrity here for? Are they here for a paycheck? Are they here because they actually love a project? You know? I don't know. It's funny because certain people there, like what was his name? Simon Liu uh, was there. No. It's, and he's talking about RTS. It's games. Simu, he, but he, all right. He, even though I'm not a big fan of modern RTS, I'm a fan of classic RTS, like StarCraft. Like what? Oh, game. yeah. He actually mentioned Oh, yeah. That. Phil played the crap out of that game back in the day when you can't find footage of him playing the game and seeing how bad he was. During oh, I, I want him to play an RTS in current year so much. I would love to see it. Oh, and then he starts talking about RTS games. I'm like, I think this guy's real. I think this guy's very actually very passionate about that genre, and maybe that's why he's interested in being a part of it. Cool. Jordan Peele, 100% believe him when he's talking about video games and stuff. And doesn't he seem like a down-to-earth guy who he has humble beginnings? He probably played the shit out of video games when he was younger. And now he wants to be a part of a Or maybe he amazing, didn't. Right? But do I believe that these major actors coming out have anything to do with it? No. You heard Anthony Mackie, oh, my kid's going to love me for this. Your kid. So you're here because your kid likes video games, not because you don't even know what the fuck they are. Uh, honestly, I would do it for my kids too. I got no problems with celebrities being there, just the way they're being used and how much screen time they get. Okay. Like, I, I don't mind a Matthew McConaughey cameo because I like seeing the guy. Okay. But when he takes too long to the point where actual developers it's get told to, to, like, cut it short and, and be done with their segments, that's that's not cool. Oh, God, Hellblade 2 look good? Yeah. Hellblade 1 is good. And so Hellblade 2, you know, looks good. My Again, why? what is taking so long for this game to be made? And when is it coming out? So many games were like 2024 or 2025 with no date. It's like, I understand they don't want to announce a date and then have to be pressured to finish it by then. But it's so hard to get hyped for games when you don't know when they're coming out, right? It really is. It's very hard to, to get hyped for any of these games. And when the entire show, there was like two dates given for anything. It's like, well, great. No, there was plenty of dates. Excuse me. Thoughts on Alloway 2's free story DLC? Uh, I know it's coming, but I didn't. I didn't hear all the concrete stuff about it. If you guys know about the concrete stuff about it, let me know. Classic. I, I haven't it. played I it yet. Play the DLC, but the question is, when is it? I don't Just know. fucking look it up, my guy. Just look it up, bro. How is it that hard? You guys gotta tell me. Look at how he's bottlenecking himself. I already gave my opinion. Boy, Double M, you're late. I already gave my opinions on the Valhalla DLC that it looks like it's just a combat challenge, and I don't really care about that, nor do I think the audience... Yeah, you're late. Go back and watch the last hour and a half, you dummy. Oh, that's right. They said that... Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. See, you... See, there is no DLC. There is no story DLC for Alan Wake. There's a new game plus mode coming out on Monday. If you want to replay the game... And it adds a couple new story elements to it, but that's it. It's the same game a second time. So there is more story so, that is new? I'm not playing the whole game again, no. <laughs> that's not a story DLC. There's a difference between a, a new story DLC... But look at this. He just he just had no idea what they were talking about, and he didn't hear specifics. And now somebody told him it's not story DLC, and now he's just shitting on people expecting him to play it. Several hours. He's like giving you the lecture of something that he didn't know 30 seconds ago content versus a new game plus mode that may add a couple it's getting sped up because you have a lot to catch up with that's bullshit <laughs> that's bullshit ben says thoughts on the new hello games trailer for the new project yeah it looks boring looks pretty boring explore explore planets with your friends no no thanks no okay. friends no friends zero friends found mm -mm. zero friends that's why he's so salty notice notice how abnormally salty he gets at games that are aimed towards socializing and playing with multiple people. For Helgen says, uh, I love that licensed games like Robocop, Avatar, Jurassic Park, Star Wars, and more seem to become worth playing again. Yeah, seems like a good a good thing because remember, for the longest time, they were just shameless cash-ins. I think what happens is... And also, uh, with the Hello games, we get the pattern of him uh, basically not allowing anybody to redeem themselves, just kind of like, he didn't allow Cyberpunk and No Man's Sky to redeem themselves, even though they did, and now they are good games. 
but he doesn't want to give them a second chance. He doesn't even want to admit that they're better. He just like, once you fuck up, you're finished. But he expects you to give them a second chance every fucking day. Every day. After a long period of time for them sucking, people stop playing them, they go away, but now they come back in a, in a, in a less AAA capacity, and now they're better. Right? <clears throat> it's actually crazy that he doesn't play any games with his wife. Like, you know, because they both have consoles, they both got the Xbox, and they probably both got the Game Pass. Why not just play together and have fun? It's so crazy to me. Yeah, Joel lost it. It's actually after crazy. Because they got, like, the perfect setup to play co-op games together. Like, the perfect setup. Expansions are coming out sometime next year. No concrete details on that yet. That's what I thought. And, yeah, I, I think you're right, uh, Bob Arctor. I think he does rage at her. Because she's trash at games. And he seems like somebody who would get really salty if, if you're playing with him in co-op and you're bad. I love that. You gotta love... That on the show, they say, so New Game Plus launches on Monday, and there'll be a couple new story elements. And somehow that story translates into, there's a new story-based DLC for Alan Wake on Monday. No, there's not. Like, Who said that? <laughs> where did you get that information from? That's completely false. People just make stuff up out of their butts. Like, what are you talking about, man? Um. All right, so we have to end this where is it? GA Q&A very soon because I have to start with shout-outs just so you guys know. Okay, Philip, where is it? Where is it, Phil? Where is the story-based DLC? What I see here is DLC expansions, which is story-based DLC, by the way, by default. Um, then we got, this is a roadmap. This is just from a couple days ago. So let's check news and let's sort them by super recent date, right? The final draft update brings new game plus next week. Final draft mode is a risky move, blah, blah, blah. I don't see story-based story DLC anywhere. It's more like DSP just uh, grasping at straws to shit on somebody for something that he thinks they're wrong about. A couple quick more questions here. Oh, we're There's like 25 minutes behind, Final dude. Final Fantasy 16 ever again. The game sucked. I'm not wasting any more time today. I'm sure I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do. I haven't seen a movie in ages, so I don't know. I don't really watch them that often. I've watched The Batman, and I didn't really like it that much. <clears throat> I thought it was just okay. I didn't like it that much, too. I thought it was too slow. And the whole Mafia subplot was actually bad. It was actually bad. The TGAs, I'm down for and the villain kind of sucked. On future podcasts, but, you know, I knew it was going to be pretty much all we talked about today. And, of course, the announcement that I'm... The Rizzler. ...on Monday, um, which we'll see how that goes. I really have no clue what to expect. Who oh boy. He's we'll super fucking nervous right. about it. <clears throat> okay. This dude is nervous about playing a video game, bro. Look, Imagine being this guy. Get the shout -outs and he loves to say how, how people are jealous of him. You're jealous of this dude? He's yeah. having like schizophrenic manic breakdowns whenever he has to play a video game. Start off today. What is there to be jealous Jade. of? Jade, who re-upped his membership. Thank you so much, Jade, for 30 months of Ultra Member support. Really appreciate that, Jade. I hope you're doing well today. Game Master with the first super chat. I'm playing Avatar with Ubisoft Plus. I love it. It's different from Far Cry. I beat it. I beat just be Far Cry. Oh. I'm glad to hear that. Because, <clears throat> sadly, they live in a bubble. Quarter level. What? To the Who lives in a bubble, Phil? Spawn killer with a super chat. Can't be you. People actually upset Zelda didn't win game of the year. I don't understand how they think it's game of the year because... <clears throat> and now we're talking about Twitter discourse again. These people, because they legitimately live in some weird, deluded reality where they think that what they see on Twitter is an accurate reflection of real life. And then we get discussions like this. <clears throat> sadly, they live in a bubble. It's that simple. Yousef with the Super Chat. Gamer's Choice also was Baldur's Gate 3. That's exactly right. Unlike other years where there's a humongous discrepancy between Game of the Year and Viewer's Choice, this year it was in line. You know, you look at a year like Last of Us 2, 1 million percent sweeps the awards, but everyone votes for Ghost of Tsushima for Game of the Year. This year, at least those two are in line. That's a great thing. <clears throat> Bloom Kit. with the Super Chat. He said, it's between Baldur's Gate 3 and Persona 3 Reload. I want Persona 3 way more, just my opinion. Too bad I'm not playing it because it's too much of an Atlas liability regardless. Mr. Game Master did a super chat. Hype for Blade game, but I hope it's not like Redfall, of course. Amon did a super chat. Why do you shout, swear, and insult viewers that disagree with you? I don't. Yeah, you do. Get fucked, dumb piece of shit. I don't. You do, factually. I am addressing directly people who are, who are ridiculous or unfair assholes. By what? By being abusive? That's who I address with this nonsense. So, sure. If you actually take it that way, you should maybe look at yourself like, why are you thinking I'm talking to you? Were you acting like that? Wow, actual gaslighting. Actual
actual gaslighting. If you think I'm doing it, you're crazy. Were you acting unfairly? Literal gaslighting. Wow, this is so good. I'm get the mouth today to come to my stream to say I can't wait to call out Phil on being wrong because Baldur's Gate 3 won game of the year. And again, Baldur's Gate free, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 ran free. If you were, you are an asshole. You understand that? Because I didn't say it was going to be game of the year the last several months. Excuse me. I didn't say it wasn't going to be game of the year the last several months. I said it's either that or Zelda. But if you're foaming at the mouth to prove me wrong, you're an asshole. I'm no, an asshole, are. Phil. Can't help you there. I'm an asshole. Now, so and you're the fucking best. Dragons, reopening his membership for you're the best. Months. You're the goat. Says Neil only once we could stick it to the haters. There you go. I, I doubt I need what? to mention because I don't really care anymore. I mean, we all knew that the Last of Us TV show was going to win Best Adaptation because, again, the Last yeah. of Us is the favorite of journalists. They love kissing the ass and sucking the balls of Neil Druckmann. So. No, it was it was very competently executed show, and it was in between The Last of Us, the TV show, or Super Mario, the movie. I'm cool with both because they're both good adaptations. I thought it was just like a well-made show. He was going to win no matter what, and I didn't even give a shit about it. <clears throat> there you go. Okay. All right. So. Except when... That, this is going to be a spoiler, by the way. You got like three seconds. When that segment, when the, the earth literally collapsed and a bunch of zombies started coming out from underneath, that was fucking stupid. Because I was wondering how that episode's going to end because they were like stuck in a corner and trapped and there was no end in sight. And then just zombies exist out of the earth. Nah, that's that's a pass. And there was generally some not so good things, but for the most part, good ad adaptation. It wasn't terrible. Can't cry about it. Here we go. Lady Charisma, our first tipper of the day with a two dollar tip. I hope you enjoy Baldur's Gate three. It's like virtual D and D campaign. If you play your cards right, something will. I Shut really the fuck up. prefer all these times you guys are spoiled about the game at all. Oh yeah, so Phil, by the way, guys, Phil prefers to not be spoiled about the game at all. So make sure to not spoil anything that happens in the game. Make sure not to do it, or the playthrough is going to be ruined. And he's very nervous about that playthrough. Let me just go in and enjoy it for what it is. And if it's great, great. And if it's not, it's not. But I want to just give it a shot after all this stuff, all this time you guys have been asking me, okay? <clears throat> uh... From, Me how do I even say this? I don't even know how to say this name. Messer, Messer, Messerkment. With a fifteen dollar tip. Oh my god, I'm excited! You're gonna play Baldur's Gate three. I cannot wait to see it. Me Messerkment. I don't know how to say the name. I don't even know what Messerk means. But uh, I'm trying to play an animation. It's lagging. So hold on a second, everybody. Let's see what happens here. Okay, can we skip this? I think we can. That's their name. All right. Dollar tip. Honor to play than to. This is literally like the worst segment of any podcast ever because it's just a glorified, just collecting money segment. Watch. If and what makes it worse is all the manual stuff he has to do. I don't mind people who do like a separate shout out segment so you you don't break up the pace of your stream. But all the manual stuff, you gotta turn around, update the latest Super Chat, update the amount of money they gave him, update the tips total, update the latest tip. And it's all made in the least practical way ever. We're turning around this way, we know the keyboard is there, tap, 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 he doesn't see what he's typing at, he makes typos, then we delete him, then we gotta look at OBS to see if it's correct. It's like the worst way to do everything. It's like the greatest hits of how to be a terrible streamer. It is made for a young modern audience. Of course, critics and journos love it. All right. Well, again, we'll see. Where's the anime? Wow, are the animations so delayed today? I'm about to refresh the page. Like the animation. There's like, too many of them. Is bad. Well, oh, we got the one minute cut. Thirteen second delay before my anime. Nobody Please, cares man. about your stupid ass tip. animations. Oh wow, we're he's raking it in tipper. today. Super good day. So ready? Ready for this? One, two, three, four, five. It says, this is an anonymous tip. 
Well, thank you for telling. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you for being honest. I love you, man. All right. Bro. You are very welcome. Thank you to the anonymous tipper. This fucking... The honesty gimmick. I, I hate the honesty gimmick when it comes to YouTubers, man. When it's like, dude, I'm, I'm just being honest. Nobody's fucking being honest. For that $20 tip. Even Phil is not being honest. I appreciate that very, very much. Okay. Even him. And he's like the most honest person ever. I really hate that gimmick. Very good. All right. Good stuff. I just want to toss more questions. My oh, way. and we got some more Q&A. Uh, so the reminder, we got like 20 minutes of Q&A. Actually wild. Put on the glasses. Let him cry. Who's oh, crying? Here. <laughs> Who cares about them? <clears throat> wait, wait, wait. Who's crying? The trolls? The DSP Let owned the trolls cuz Phil made a lot of money oh, today. See here. There's an update to Call of Duty Burn at the TGAs. Call of Duty devs are hurt and angry that a peer has mocked them. They also claim that God of War has short user engagement, laughing out loud. Oh, was it that guy? I forgot who it was. Um, but he said, my speech is shorter than this year's Call of Duty campaign. And that got the Call of Duty devs super butthurt. Which, in a way, I kind of don't blame them because it's not up to them that Activision wants the game to be developed in one year and they just had to slap some shit together as soon as possible. I don't really blame them. It's all on the publisher nowadays. I'm sure that those guys, they wanted to make the best Call of Duty game possible cares about them <clears throat> yeah it was christopher judge it was uh um, let him this cry. dude oh, god of war see. guy uh derek if you're talking about the uh if you're talking about the tear maker that you're making that tear maker i'm going to be doing on christmas eve on christmas eve we're going to do a live tear maker ranking of christmas specials and movies it'll be something fun to do for christmas eve stream so we'll have my marathon on the 23rd that's going to be live schedule update, three games that you guys vote for, food, drinks, food. being married. And, being married. Uh, possibly like trying like a treat that's like a holiday themed treat. Oh, go fuck yeah. yourself. Too. What's up, Jade? Good morning. Figure it out. The new version. So how would I have access? Coffee, lunch. It, but I tried the demo of Monster Hunter World and within 90 minutes of playing it, everyone hated it and said never play this game again. So I never did. I listened. These are horrible for you. You should not drink them unless you absolutely need them. It's not the caffeine. It's everything else. Everything else in energy drinks is just fucking terrible. They toss all this crap in there. Taurine? Taurine? Yeah, really hell yeah. Taurine. You're checking out Lego Fortnite? Um, no, not really. I don't, I don't really play Fortnite. So, I'm not checking it out. Caffeine in your body. But I know who is. My boy. I forgot his name. What was his, his name? Nick what? Who was here yesterday for the Game Awards stream? What was the name of the dude that played Fortnite that gave himself a shout out in their chat? And then we, we raided him. Quote unquote raided him. Nick, well I can't figure it out. But uh, Nick Tricks, yes. Nick Tricks. This dude. Uh, no, no, it's not this dude. That guy was white. Nick Tricks? Tricks? No? No? Nick? Oh, this is a huge derailment. It's, it's not really even worth it anymore. Yeah, I can't find him. But Nick Tricks, go look it up. He's the GOAT. Really? If you need an energy boost, have a cup of coffee. One cup. Or a crack. A cup of coffee has a, a cup lot of, of crack. caffeine in it. It's going to give you what you need, and you're not loading your body with... No, I'm not talking about Nikki 30 one cup I'm talking about a, a different dude. Zoop, if you were here yesterday, you would know. <clears throat> Very fun. What's all this? Whatever happened to good old one cup of black coffee? No, instead, I have my coffee, but I have to have 17 sugars. And it's this creamer, dude. Dairy, whipped cream, yeah. sprinkles. So the, the story behind this guy is I'm watching the Game Awards, and he's giving himself a shout out by sending him like $20 Super Chat. And I made fun of him. And then we, we joined his stream to see what he's doing. And the dude was just like handing out, chilling. Where did his stream go? I don't know. But um, Hate Army got a, a big shout out. Cinnamon sugar, fucking swizzle sticks coming out of it, right? It's like, so here we go. Here's your coffee. Well, your coffee would have been 200 calories, but now you're drinking a 2,700 calorie drink. Well, that's why it's bad for you. 
if you just drink the black cup of coffee, just zoop, you get the coffee and caffeine you need, you're good to go. You didn't destroy your body with toxic shit. Yeah, bro, shut the you're fuck not gonna up. Crash from that. This dude, he turned into like a lifestyle guru in the last three years. Ever since he got married, he's acting like he went on some profound Hollywood diet where he's only drinking children's blood and eating uh, cockroaches and shit. Like, get the fuck out of here, bro. We can see you got fucking man tits. Don't, don't be talking about health stuff. This dude's face is falling apart. It's melting off of his actual face. Don't Good. talk health stuff. Right? <clears throat> Have I considered playing Last Faith? Is the 2D Souls like Metroidvania? No. Down a cup of coffee in one go? I could. I have to wait for it to cool, though. I'm not going to be chugging scalding coffee to my throat. <laughs> Would you just take a steaming hot cup of black coffee? And you just... Ow, 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 no. No, we're not doing this. Definitely not doing this. No. You wait, you know. That's not a good idea. This is the type of stuff you would do to a like a three year old to make them laugh, and then they would still Gee, think you're what's cringe. Going on? Pop the thirty month membership and says almost time for RoboCop to enforce Murphy's law. There you go. Yeah. If it can go wrong, it will go wrong. Alex Murphy said. But it's like, right? He's he's not funny. We I think it's pretty safe to say it. He's just simply not funny. He's made funny jokes in the past. He's done funny stuff. He's just not funny. But he puts himself in. In this format, where he kind of has to be, he kind of has to be entertaining. If if all you're gonna do is just sit there and do a Q and A, you kind of have to be able to be entertaining to keep up the convo, keep keep the conversation with yourself going, so people can keep asking you stuff. So he's like shooting himself in the leg because he puts himself in a format that he is just bad at. He's just naturally not talented to do this. Into the law. If he was like a stand-up comedian, I would get it. If he was like Theo Vaughn, because Theo Vaughn is an entertaining guy. You might not find him funny. I don't think all of his stuff is funny, but he's entertaining. He knows how to tell a story, keep you engaged. This dude doesn't. He's like the opposite of that. He's a charisma vacuum. Shove this gun. And then the whole show is about him and his personality and his charisma that he thinks he got. Your... Uh... <clears throat> Green tea with honey. Green tea is good, but sadly, green tea does not have as much caffeine as the as the coffee does. Uh, you have to drink a little more of it. But green tea is also not. That oh, I'm done with this all. coffee talk. Excuse me. The PC term is coffee with no added ingredients, not black coffee. No, that nobody fucking cares about that. That's just some fucking meme. <laughs> Internet. I mean, I'd lose everything. All my sponsorships, my partnership. Oh. Oops. <laughs> oh my god people are ridiculous man do you do you see how silly this is too this fucking joke flopped so hard and then we got a moment look at this Let, let's analyze the joke right let's analyze that the entire joke we're gonna do a joke review black as night i drink coffee and can't blacker than the center of a black hole how about that? We're not. We're gonna start about this last, the cancellation joke, because this is like a series of jokes. Not one of them is funny. <laughs> uh, let's start from here. Because let me tell you, I'm really afraid about being canceled. Oh God forbid if I was canceled on the internet. I mean, I'd lose everything, all my sponsorships, my partnership. Oh, oops. So the whole joke is that he's already canceled, right? Because he doesn't get sponsorships and partnerships. Even though he's a guy who's cried in the past about being canceled and how it's not fair and blah, blah, blah. Now it's something that he's proud of. And then he, that's the punchline is that he's already canceled. He doesn't have any sponsorships. Therefore, he has nothing to lose, right? Then he just laughs to himself. <laughs> and then we get a, a, a wings level chair squeak in the background as he just tries to move on from the segment but it's just dead air you know doesn't even have like a, a a soundboard to say something stupid to like just add on to the the segment <clears throat> and then it just chair squeaking oh my god people are ridiculous eh. do, you, do you see how silly this is too like, some people would actually say that, too. No, yeah, some people are fucking retarded. You shouldn't pay any attention to them. There's plenty of people on the internet that are gonna say some stuff. Plenty of people on the internet that are gonna say some outrageous, stupid stuff. 
Some of them believe in what they're saying. Some of them are saying it just because they want to get engagement or some kind of attention. If you think it's fucking retarded, don't give him any attention. That's kind of it. Oh, I can't say black coffee. I have to say coffee with no attitude. No, you don't have to right. say anything. You can say black coffee. To say that. You can say so it. Afraid. What are you? What Who is afraid? Problem? In this life, if really you have to tiptoe around the, the tulips and step on the eggshells and be so afraid of every little action that you have, you know, uh, you gotta, you're, you gotta, you, you fucked your life up, basically. You really fucked your life up. Sure, like, Phil. Right? Sure. Like, if you're a content creator and you actually have sponsors that will drop you if you say black coffee. No, um, they're not. Nice. This is, this is just a, a straw man that he just invented right now. There's no story or anecdote or case that happened in the past that is like this. It, it never happened. Sponsors, like, forget it. <laughs> right? Fuck that. <clears throat> This is the dumbest shit, man. Oh, look at how, how glad he is that he made up a straw man and then debunked them. That's the epic thing. I love it when I see people do that on the internet. They create somebody to argue with and then they win the argument. And then it's like DSP on the Project 7 turnaround. He just turns around smugly, crosses his hands. Yeah, I fucking won. I won this battle. I clapped that imaginary person's ass hey, on the internet. Else, guys? I think you guys understand the difference why I love being independent, right? You get it. What? Right? Independent? Says, Bro, you like the most dependent person ever. Get sponsors and partners. and no, Do you understand? That's, that's when this happens. Really? That, when you see content creators and they have to mute their, their mic when they say a word or the change edit, they edit out what they've said. That's what they're doing that for. Because they're... Bro, you gotta turn off the music in Grand Theft Auto so you can still make money off the video. It's, it's, you don't have any right to an opinion like that. So deathly afraid. There's people right now that they can't say, they're so afraid of saying the word sex. They can't say it. They're oh, like, wow. Like, like, Bill is not afraid of the word sex. He's afraid of the actual sex, but not the word sex. He doesn't mind saying sex. He just minds having sex because sex is for people that want to have kids. Steamy content or something like that. Seriously, they can't say that word because, oh, I will lose a sponsor. I'll get demonetized. Oh, boo-hoo. Coward. <laughs> Be a human. <clears throat> say the word. Good lord. Look at how fucking smug he is, man. He's definitely feeling himself today. He's so high on that high horse. He's so self-righteous right now. I love him like this. Because, like, when, when he's like this, when he's had a patch of... Like a couple of weeks of solid support and he's feeling like he's feeling the vibe. He gets super smug and he takes really fat L's. And I feel like the next fat L he's going to take is when the Mudahar video comes out. Because Mudahar is making a video about DSP and his begging. And it's probably going to be a pretty fucking hot video when it comes out. I'm actually pretty excited to, to it coming out. Bottom line, if, if you're so dependent... On monetization and sponsorships that you can't even say certain words, you're probably, you know, you've you've taken the wrong path in life. Sorry. <clears throat> uh, broski, I think if you're dependent on people who are proven to be disabled giving you their disability checks just so you can simply continue to live in the house that you're currently living in, you've taken the wrong uh, road in life. It's like the wildest, the most fucking hypocritical thing he can say, dude. All right, anyway. It's actually you know, insane. Because those people that take the sponsorships, that put the ads on their videos, they do it so they don't have to resort to pathetic shit like this. Uh, the people that, that want people to subscribe to their Patreon so they can still release copyright stuff on YouTube and, you know, keep doing the videos that they like, they do it so they don't have to degrade themselves into this. And this dude is the bottom of the barrel, and he's so proud of it. That in, in his inverted reality, he's actually on top, morally. Last, last chance for questions. It's completely fucked, man. Robocop. And it's only going to get worse. I'm looking good today in this shirt. Well, thank you. This is a... Gee, what color is this? Is it an offensive color? Can I say this color? It's, it's a brown. It's brown. But it's kind of beige at the same time. Like beige. Oh. Nobody give a fuck. It's time. For the Phil's Day Off segment. Oh, we got a Phil's Day Off. Remember that thing exists? Wow. Phil laughs about this now, but if he were to get demonetized for saying the stupid crap he says, 
we would never hear the end of how he was wronged. Um, absolutely. Matter of fact, I would say there is, let's say, at least 30 minutes of footage on his channel that you can find at any point that are, are fair enough ground for him to get removed from the partnership program. And, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna lie, if somebody wanted to go through my footage, I would get fucking clapped, because I talk a, a lot of shit. Uh, but then again, I think, if you don't put ads on your stuff, YouTube doesn't detect it that easy. So I'm, I'm kind of going under the radar. But him? Oh man, there's a lot of material to get him fucking removed from a bunch of stuff. If YouTube actually cared, which they don't. It took him, like, years to actually do something about Onision, a guy who has actual federal investigations of, of grooming in... I think they might have called it human trafficking, but I, I don't think that is uh, true. Anyways. Yesterday was my day off. Anyways. Yesterday I had five zillion things to do, but I already told you about most Because, like, you can find segments of this guy telling people that if they die, nobody's going to miss them, that they're a waste of life. Literal, like, TOS destroying segments. Actual. And you can see who he's talking to. You can see all the context. And it's completely... Uh, uh, transgression when it comes to the terms of service but nobody really cares <clears throat> grocery shopping pet supply shopping and restocking i because remember i was so sick at the end of october okay that threw everything into disarray and when that threw everything into disarray we have been out of all kinds of products for weeks so finally we had a week where we had time to go out and do everything we had to go to costco oh costco right now is crazy there's a zillion people there. We had to park like at the fucking way at the opposite end of the lot. Uh, okay. Because there's so many people at Costco right now because of the holidays. Um, but basically, we restocked on everything that we needed, but it was very expensive. You know, what are you going to do? We need literally everything in the house. Cleaning products, paper products, you know, all things that are commodities that you save a lot of money if you buy them in bulk. <clears throat> so we bought all of that stuff. Um, it was a crazy day out. Like we were, we went out way early. Wow, it's crazy because he went to the store. Past, like, I would say almost like 8 p.m. So we were out over eight hours with all the shit that we had to do all day. A crazy amount of stuff. We did try a new restaurant. There's a new Vietnamese restaurant around here that apparently make their own noodles in-house. And so we tried it, and we each got a big bowl of pho. And my wife got a steak and meatball, and I got a short beef short rib. Whoa. Right. Now, you know me, I can't eat that much red meat, but I thought, what the hell, I'll just try it. They bring me this pho with insanely huge chunk of meat with two bones out of it, you know, giant rib bones sticking out of it. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to eat this thing? It was insane. They gave me a chopsticks to eat it with and a, and a knife. And I'm like, hmm. So at first, here's the thing. I'm like, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat around it. Right? And maybe when I reduce the amount of broth and noodles in the bowl, it'll be exposed. It'll be easier to cut up or whatever. And I thought I bit off more than I could chew. Because I'm like, this is going to be a pain to try to, to cut up and eat. Oh my but god. We got... I ate we literally got like a fucking... Uh, an audio description of him having a meal, dude. This is this is the state of, of Dark Side Phil. Ate a lot of the broth. And now when I went to eat the meat, I... Bro is telling you how he went to a fucking restaurant and ordered something and it was big. And he had to eat it and he didn't know how. That was perfectly, superbly stewed rib meat. It came right off the bone. It was just like falling off. Imagine like, oh. being the dent that is home eating ramen noodles while the guy you give money to that cries poor is telling you how he spent your money eating beef short ribs. Yeah, I'm gonna tell that dent to go fuck himself because it's their fucking fault. I mean, if this guy is not fucking hiding... That he's spending the money on restaurants and bullshit. He's not hiding. It's not a secret. He is openly bragging about it. He's bragging about how one week he's talking about that he might eat a lunch meat sandwich. And then somebody gives him money. And then he eats fucking lobsters. It's, at this point, it's the fucking dense responsibility. To, to think for themselves. If they can't, too bad. I can't help them. Get fucked. Get exploited. Oh, so you don't need, like, a fork or anything. Sometimes you're either a smart fella or a fart smeller. And I think they're definitely fart smellers. Because just with the chopsticks and the knife, it just comes right off. So, dude, it was so good. But I didn't have that much of the meat. I had maybe, like, five to ten bites because I can't eat that much red meat. And it was funny because I loved every bite of it. It was super delicious. And then when the waiter came back, he's like, oh, is there a problem with the meat? I said, 
No, it's the opposite. The meat is so good, I have to stop myself from eating it for health purposes. I'm not just health purposes. <laughs> So it's absolutely He's going to get a gout attack in the restaurant. He's not even going to be able to drive home. Delicious, Damn. But I'm sorry, I can't eat more. I know it's kind of a waste, but what can you do? I oh, I also heard somebody mention that he doesn't let Cat refuel the car. He gets to decide when the car is getting refueled and by how much, which is kind of like weirdly, I don't know the right word for that, but when you don't allow people to do something and it, in an abusive context, in a relationship context supposed to eat that much i had no idea that much meat was coming in my my soup but it was super good and what we want to do is we want to go back and try they have everything they just have like yeah controlling controlling is a good word different cuts of pork and beef that you can have in the pho and we want to try all that because we haven't had pho in ages and it was super duper good oh my god you go to you go you drink the broth the first thing you start tasting is this zesty kick of herb flavor. The zesty the kick broth. of herb this flavors. So dude with this flavor, like, oh my god, dude, this is like super duper good. This dude is yeah. like, he he gotta have some kind of a food fetish. He he gotta, he just kinda has to. He can't not have it. This dude is like, the only thing he gets happy in life is gambling and food. That's that's just it, man. And he just lights up like a Christmas tree. Yeah, I, I actually... I'm not kidding. Just talking about it now, I'm appetized and I want to go back. Yeah, he got horny right now. <laughs> so good. So we had a really good meal. First time ever at this restaurant, which is really nice. And, and it's, it's always good to find a place that you like so much you want to go back. And we loved it and we want to go back. So there you go. <clears throat> okay. Uh, are we done? Oh, outside of that, like I said, you know what I did on the day off. I what did you do? Spent the whole day out doing all this stuff, this busy stuff we had to do. Okay. I got a haircut. If you didn't notice, I got a haircut. See? Oh, oh my God. What is this fade? What is it? How? It's the most irrational fade I've ever seen in my life. Because it has to be even, right? It has to be even and consistent. That's the whole point of getting faded. That's the whole point of getting this style of a haircut. Is being even and being consistent on the fade. And this shit is a fucking train wreck. Look at this. You got... Uh, about the, the place where the sideburns are supposed to begin. Longer than everything else. Then we get a fade. Then we got, like, half a fade that's a darker shade than the rest of the fade. What the fuck, dude? And, uh... What the actual fuck? Outside of other things, other appointments and things that I did, too, during my day out, um... Among, that's why we were out all day. Like, we had, it was a day where it was the first day out since before we were sick. So... It was crazy the amount of stuff we had to do in one day. Confirmed. What? The first day out since before there was sick. So they haven't had a day out in... What the fuck is this going to be like? A month? Because, dude, this, this guy... I know he talks about being sick like it happened yesterday. It happened like a month ago. Maybe even more than a month at this point. Fine. And then when we got home, then we watched the Game Awards. So... You know, and then we went to sleep because then it was already like like past midnight because the fucking game awards were so long. So, there you go. That's Phil's day off. Very exciting. I'm glad you you uh you asked, right? Well, why okay. is it a segment when right. it's not exciting? It's time to adjourn. You Our can just say you didn't do anything interesting. Christmas. Well, my parents gifted us some food. Uh, they had actually gifted us these turkey breast stuffed. I cannot. Stuffing and wrapped in bacon, and we were gonna. Original Honestly, food. I cannot fucking believe. I cannot believe. This is a 40-year-old man with a quote-unquote family. And he gets his mommy and daddy sending him QVC for Christmas. Instead of him sending them something. The guy who should take care of his actual parents, who are like 70 years old at this point. Or 60-something. They gotta send him fucking food in the mail. You realize how pathetic this is? Because if they got to do this, they realize that he's a man baby. They realize he can't take care of himself. So they got to send him shit like that. It's so profoundly pathetic. That for Thanksgiving, but we actually decided on the turkey breast roast we did, which we're happy we did because that was amazing. So we're going to have those turkey breasts on Christmas, but we just have to decide what we want with it. We don't know yet. We haven't really thought about it. You know, probably some interesting sides. We just don't know what yet. We have to figure out what we want to make along with it. Still got a few, a couple weeks to figure that out. It's actually crazy. Right. I can't, I can't wrap my head around them just ordering food to his place. It's just so weird, and I, I don't think that's like an American tradition or anything. I don't think that's a common thing to do. 
And I understand, you know, your parents love you. They want to do something for you, send something for you, right? But they do it all the time. It almost makes it seem like they think he's a man child, too. Okay. I received a $10 tip. I was not expecting hey, epic. that. It was worth all the stalling for uh, 10 bucks. Let's see. For the complete experience, try eating baby food when you're playing RoboCop Next Level Immersion. Keep up the great work from Mark. What does that He mean? should eat baby food in general because uh, his teeth are probably profoundly fucked up. I don't remember him ever talking about going to the dentist. Not, not once. I don't ever remember him. It, his teeth must be, at this point, it's a war zone up in there. It's like... It, his his ass is probably cleaner than his mouth. Try eating baby food when playing RoboCop? What? Considering he also looks like he can barely get his mouth open. <laughs> what does that mean? <clears throat> I actually don't understand that one. Thanks, thanks for the tip. I appreciate it, but, uh, okay. Are you saying that RoboCop is too easy or something? Is that what you're saying? Like, it's a baby's game? Because RoboCop eats baby food? Oh, I didn't remember that. Apparently people are saying that's actually the lore of the movie, that RoboCop has to eat baby food. <laughs> that's funny. She eats some strained peas. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> this is, by the way, he, a guy who claims his audience is all over 18 years old. It's all over 18. This... These jokes, 18 plus. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> wow. 18 plus go. humor. RoboCop eats baby food. Level one. Wow. Films. You got to watch the good ones from the 80s. That's that's like a time period that's like... Oh my God. Oh, you see, he lights up again having to talk about the 80s. Back in the day when his mama used to take care of him and not just send him QVC in the mail. It's all the classics from the 80s. You got to watch RoboCop. You got to watch Predator. You gotta watch the. Oh, they made a movie about Derek. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that out. In films, you gotta watch the good ones from the '80s. That's that's like a time period. That's like a time capsule. You know what I mean? Like all those great movies from that 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 era. Okay. All right. Let's end the show. Thank you all. Great show. I knew today's show. Epic. Would be jam packed with interest and action. Everyone talking. Really? Yeah, Everyone talking. Fun. Why, why didn't we see them talking? Okay, now, as a direct result of the Game Awards... I hate this request. fucking fake... I hate the fake community leader DSP dude. A guy who can only physically think about himself and what is good for him, trying to be a, like a leader of a community, is the worst. He just ends up looking like a, a pissed-off teacher. Yes, Baldur's Gate 3 starts Monday. Chapter 6, which will mark. See you. See you the rest. And he's gonna go take a pee pee. Is he gonna beg? I think this matters, but uh, I did get Baldur's Gate 3 donated to me on PlayStation, so I'm playing it on PS5. I know a lot of people are saying it on PS5 it runs gorgeously, so there you go. I mean, it just came out for Xbox last night, so no one really knows how it runs on Xbox, but I'm, getting, I'm playing it on PS5, so hopefully it runs really well. Um, There you go. All right, so everyone, let's take a brief break. I'll come back in a few minutes, and it's time to continue on with Robocop Rogue City. I hope you'll stick around. It's a great game. Thank you all, and I'll see you in a few for Robocop. And that's it. Wow. What an amazing experience. Is he back? He is back. Is he playing? He is playing. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to be out. I guess that's it. I guess that's it, huh? Yeah, he's playing video games now. I'm not really into video game stuff. So thanks, everybody, for swinging by, watching, interacting. I'm going to see you later, maybe tomorrow, if my microphone comes on time, because I also need to go buy a XLR cable. Uh, but we'll see. Um, if you, I guess now you're going to get forwarded to somebody who's streaming. I, I think it's bingo, but I'm not sure. Uh, oh, yeah, let's look at the Baldur's Gate clip. Uh, I think Aquatil has it. So we got the Baldur's 3 wins Game of the Year award and DSP takes an L. And this is his opinion from August 25th. Let's see that. So first, uh, yeah, first we get the context, right? Here, here's the thing, though, all right? This is what a lot of people still don't understand. Right now, Baldur's Gate 3 is all the rage. 
And it's all the rage for good reason. Everyone who's playing it on PC is saying it's one of the best RPGs ever made, yada yada. However, it's a PC-centric RPG. So, when you look at Baldur's Gate 3, you have to judge it in the same vein as games like Divinity, right? Or other similar titles. I think you should just judge it based on its own merits. Um, yeah, it's its own game. You can rank it, you can analyze it, you can review it as its own game. I don't think you should directly compare it to something else. But, of course, this is DSP. He can't, he can't not compare it to every, everything else. Baldur's Gate 3 is popular right now. But once Starfield hits... You're likely not going to hear anything about Baldur's Gate ever again. Baldur's Gate 3 could literally be the best game of the decade, and it's still not going to get as much attention as a game like Starfield. Okay? You have to understand this. All right? So when I hear things like, oh, it was unfair that Xbox wasn't getting Baldur's Gate 3, but PlayStation is, you have to understand something. In one week's time, no one will be talking about Baldur's Gate 3 in the mainstream gaming media. It will as if the game never existed. Because all you're going to hear is Starfield, 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 Starfield. And then Lives of P, Mortal Kombat. And then when October hits, all those new releases that are consoles. You're not going to hear Baldur's Gate 3 whispered once. You may hear it at the end of the year as a Game of the Year contender. And it will not win Game of the Year. Well, I mean, what do I got to say? What do I got to say? What is there left to say? He was wrong. And the problem is not that he was wrong. The problem is how fucking convinced he is that he is right. And that's when he takes the, the juiciest L's, like this one. And I don't give a fuck about any of his cult from today. I don't care about how many times he's changed his fucking narratives and he changed his fucking opinions. I don't give a fuck. He seemed like he wanted to seal his opinion here because he was super smug about it. And that's what we're going to go by. Because this, this seems like he's... He's completely okay. certain. You have to understand this. You see, he's telling you, you have to understand this. He was entirely a million percent convinced that he was right. So there we go. We're using his fucking opinion. And it, it doesn't hold water. He was objectively wrong. There you go. Fat L. And um, yeah, that's it. That's it. That was a pretty short clip. So see you guys around. Peace out. Don't get yonged. And... I don't know. I need more Yong Ya jokes, dude. I don't even know if his name is pronounced Yong Ya or Yong Ye. But I've heard people say it uh, Yong Ye. But anyways, get Yonged and um, Yong out.